Anderson is running behind, so we'll go ahead and get started. Without him, we will begin um, with an RDA board meeting. So the commission is meeting as an RDA board. Um, we'll begin that meeting now, and then following that, we'll adjourn the RDA board meeting and convene a work session, following which will be our normal meeting at 5 o'clock. All right. So, RDA meeting. And this is approval of the Morgan County RDA contract. So, why don't we have Mr. Ebert kind of explain the process? And I think the consultant they're looking at working with is here as well. But I don't think we've seen the actual contract. I was going to say, I haven't seen the contract. So, uh, Mr. Christopoulos sits here. Um, I'm going to have him maybe talk a little bit about the process, but conceptually for an RDA, uh, you have to establish and define the area, and you have to go through a process of defining the budget, creating the budget. The concern, of course, that the county has is that budget and that defined area. Uh, the length of the RDA, the percentages, et cetera, so on, makes sense for the county. So there's really a need for the county to have an unbiased uh, set of eyes look at that um, and make a positive recommendation or in the, in the very least help to kind of create that and make that recommendation to give a positive thumbs up. Um, the process has changed over the last couple of years and so I uh, talked to Tom, who has a tremendous amount of experience in Austin City working on RDAs, very uh, beneficial RDA at the BBO that is uh, paying off dividends now and has helped to sustain economic development for Ogden City. So, if you don't mind, I'll invite Tom off to talk a little bit about the process and, and why we have to go through this particular piece because it changed in the last couple of years. Commissioners, um, the primary reason is we have to do it because the law 17C requires us to do it. But let me kind of hit the main items. Um, there has to be a reaffirmation of the development agreement between the county and the developer. The biggest part and the reason that I'm here is to do the gap in impediment and feasibility analysis, which basically says that the developer can't make this project work without X amount of money coming in. And I have to determine what the X amount of money is. That's reasonable. And the, that is determined by the time value of money and the period in which it comes back and how fast the development goes. Those things are required. There has to be shown a need. And the need is not just financial. There has to be some others. Um, part of it is done in your general plan that's currently being considered. The social and economic benefits, the educational benefits are secondary. There has to be a reason to do that. They're not always purely quantifiable, the same as in the gap and impediment study. So the, the reason it's called the impediment study is there are certain re reasons why this development would not take place if not for, and you'll hear that term from me all the time, if not for what the county is willing to do, this project would not go underway. Um, so those are the main kind of rough cutting items that, that I have to do. Uh, then there's a lot of detailed things that come out of that particular discussion. Um, the project area characteristics and what that's going to look like, that's pretty much um, the impact analysis that will be discussed in the impact analysis. What the characteristics are, what it looks like, is it considered to be contributing to the, to the county, will it benefit or will it detract from the county, and part of that analysis is how much infrastructure is going to go in, that eventually will have to be paid for by the citizens at large. So that becomes a, a cost that we have to factor in. And so there's a cost-benefit analysis in that. The standards to guide the Continental, um, what we're, not the Continental, but the, the CRA district, it used to be called RDA for, in our, our great infinite wisdom, we change the name about every five years. Um, so we have to make sure that we take into consideration the objectives of the community. So that's where we come back to the social and economic uh, considerations um, and also the design guidelines. And the design guidelines are in 
we are being considered under the general plan. I'll basically pretty well adopt what's there into this particular document, unless there's some objections that come out, and the objections that come out during the final design and uh, hearing. How the purposes of the state law will be attained, I have to basically write a, uh, an opinion that will be reviewed by outside legal counsel. Um, but I'll do most of the underlying work and then they'll review it. How the plan is consistent with the general plan. And so the general plan has to be adopted before I can basically do that, which would be very helpful. Um, and then, you know, right now the plan as it stands and what, the way I understand it complies with what's being proposed in the zoning ordinances. So again, I, I talked about the physical and social and economic conditions. Um, then there has to be a negotiation that's done between the developer and the county as to the term and duration of the uh, CRA district and also how much money is going to come back and who's paying for what. That's the big job that, that I undertake and I have to do that and explain it to you and also to the Add to the school district. Um, so I basically uh, prepare a description and negotiation of any financial assistance, assistance offered, analysis of the public benefit and the project area budget, which is I take all of the estimated costs going into the district, I look at what comes out of that in terms of tax benefits, and then um, look and see whether, whether there is a benefit in the long term. Uh, to the county. That's my job. So I don't know if there's any further questions. Those are kind of the main requirements of the law. There are some other minor ones. Uh, one that I mentioned is that we can't go ahead and to anything that is being built right now that goes in service before this is done can't, can't receive any benefit. The assumption is, is that it's being built without being asked for benefit, therefore it didn't need it. They can't very well make a case that there's a gap if it's already built. So, so, so ultimately, the goal is then that it benefits the community yeah. in the in the long run. Right. So, What's there's, usually there's, that time period, long run. Well, it can go. It doesn't matter. We can go up to thirty years under the law. The value, though, to the developer really dissipates the longer term that it goes out. So there are other additional things um, that you have to consider is who's going to pay for the infrastructure, is the developer paying for it, or is it being put in by the developer and adopted by the county. All of those things have to go into the, the computation. So the period typically, when we start getting out over 20, 25 years, and we're using the money from longer than that, it doesn't really benefit the project very much. So we try to figure out if we can do it within 15 to 20 years and if it makes sense. The biggest part of the job for me is just the, it's basically the technical portion of the evaluation. And I have to justify everything that goes into that evaluation. And obviously, if a project's built over 10 years or five years, you have to make some assumptions as to Will costs go up, and you know what will happen to the costs, and you have to project those because costs going up or taxes going up is actually a benefit to the CRA. So those all have to be factored in. And there's a lot of other factors, but I'd probably just bore anybody but me. So, <laughs> so again, I think the value. Unless there's another question, I think the value that I and the reason I felt very comfortable with Tom is. In the past, I've seen budgets and project areas put together, and usually they're at the request of the developer, and so there's usually a little lean to what makes sense for the developer. Where Tom has spent 30 plus years looking at the, the needs, the ongoing costs, and future costs of the municipality. So he understands that you know there may be a short term uh, gain, but there's a long term cost, and so I really ask Tom to be just really aware because you know Morgan's a small community with 14, you know, thousand people people going to grow exponentially to 16 or 17, you know, not a huge amount of growth that is being forecasted, um, but, but these type of infrastructure costs that pass along to the county become super expensive. And so we'll really ask Tom to you know, keep an eye on that and really 
be able to present something to you, you feel comfortable uh, as far as a budget and a project there. So typically, typically where the hard part for the, the political body comes is what happens when the roads and everything we build out of the RDA become the property and, the, and become the service requirement of the county or if this if now green ever becomes a formalized political entity how then it does when we look at that because you're looking at putting in infrastructure that's 50 years old but at the end of the 50th year will there be enough revenue created that it will cover those costs going forward and typically there are but you still have to look at it and and demonstrate that it actually will happen so you do know that you'll have costs that will grow. You'll have costs of policing. You'll have costs of infrastructure going up. You'll have associated costs with more people in the school system. And all of those have to be weighed. And so there's a good portion of science, but there's also an art. And those parts of art will discuss the most. So, so the in-service requirement or limitation maybe is the way it should be characterized. If, if the developer starts construction, does the in-service requirement pertain to the last thing that they develop or the first thing that they develop? Or? Just when it starts being taxed. You can't start taxing it before. You can't tax it outside of the RDA. So you couldn't bring it into the county because it isn't a, as an asset and then put it in the RDA. The RDA has to be established first and then the taxes are established. So all of them will come on, all of the elements of the, of the project will come on at different dates and that doesn't matter. It's just that one, we have to make sure that this is done before the elements come on and they can come on anytime between now and 20 years from now. So at the Ogden Airport we have assets coming on 20 years from now and they're all part of the plan. So, so you're saying that <clears throat> in that case, so if a project is started, you know, let's just take a grocery store. It's already started, they've already done some groundbreaking and that kind of stuff. That's okay. It's, That's you're okay. ask me to cut hairs? No, I'm just trying to say, <laughs> is it going to be within the yeah, RDA That's why or this not? has to be done really quickly because that won't likely go in service before this is done. And that's why the contract, you'll look at it. My goal is to have this done by January. I thought I could actually have it done sooner, but just based on the way things process and the notifications and everything else, I needed some wiggle room in case something happened because I don't want to start the whole process over again and miss the deadline for that particular asset. Right. So it's important that we get all the assets that we can into the district. It's important to the developer, but it's also important you know, to what goes on in the long term. And but they can down. start They can start doing groundwork? There's not a prohibition against starting. There's a prohibition against starting to tax for it. Oh, okay. And bringing it fully into service prior to entering into the agreement. And I don't want to say this too much out loud. We've stretched a little bit in Ogden from time to time because the developer got finished before we got the process finished. But you can't be too far off. I mean, you can't be a year behind and, you know, do it, but... Okay, well, so... Our timeline is, is okay. Not to take this too far on a tangent, but you brought up the point that Mountain Green could, at some point, incorporate. Um, how does that work if they, if they incorporate? Because typically, you know, we would have the participating entities, the school district, the county, would agree to the RDA. And let's say five years down the road, a city is formed there. Do they do they come in and, and become part of that, or they still tax their the their reason? normal? Yeah, yeah, that's never happened to me before. So okay, I, <laughs> I'm just curious how that I works. Yeah. I, the question is: is can they, after the fact, when they declare themselves a city, um, charge an extra amount and that their particular proportion in the C for the CRA? And I don't know. I've never done that one before. Or does but their I normal tax out. apply to this? Yeah. Area, I don't know. You think conceptually with their application to the states based upon the present tax value that you're bringing in, the RDA would be like a governing piece of that. So, conceptually, if they had a tax base to become a city, it would be based upon the RDA components that are already being in place. 
if the RDA is a limiter because they're only collecting 20% of the tax, the available taxes for the next five years, or whatever that number may be, then maybe they don't have the available tax base to become a citizen. And that would be my guess, is that you're not going to be able to count it in the new tax base until the, the CRA is sunsetted. So what we may do and is we'll look at uh, having a clause in the development agreement that allows that to come online after a certain period of years. But I wouldn't know that until I run the numbers. I mean, I, I think that could become important if they got to that point. I would not want a CRA to limit their ability to become a, a township should they, you know, get well, to that, that point. That'll, so there's a certain level of objectives that we have to put into this plan. That's one of them we'll have to consider. Um, and that's one of the things we'll have to consider on the size and assets that go into um, into the district because part of it is we have to get enough money to do the infrastructure and then that'll dictate the size and, and the challenge we have, I think you know, with residential is we only get roughly a little over half of that revenue comes into the district. The commercial is far more important. So, um, but I don't know the components yet because I haven't seen, there's quite a bit going on over there and I haven't been able to look at it. It takes quite a bit of time for me to sit down and massage the numbers and make sure that I get it structured the way that it's going to be mutually beneficial. Because you don't want something that's not beneficial to you and the developers don't want something that's not beneficial to them. And that's the balancing act that has to take place. I suppose on the bright side too, sales tax is generally the larger contributor to a city's tax base, and we're talking property taxes. It's also this. the most volatile. It, it is. So, yeah, you're right. But it is in this particular case, and that's one where I'll come back and ask you if we're thinking about um, we could go into a sales tax uh, portion of the contract that would become part of the contract as far as, as, far as increment. But we would limit that uh, to a shorter period than, say, the property taxes. But again, um, this is calculus, and uh, it takes some time for me to, to do that and to do the scenario analysis, and I'll do probably five or six scenario analysis. That's why I kind of wanted to get started, because nobody likes the nerdy stuff but me. So, <laughs> so the process, really quickly, don't get too far, Tom. The process was... In order for us to get moving forward, not to have to go through a big long process, was to do an addendum to the contract, which is actually on the uh, agenda for the next meeting. Um, I've already talked to the developer. They're willing to pay uh, the dollars to start the process. So they were going to enter into a contract with the RDA to pay for the services. The RDA then would reimburse the county um, for the addendum costs for me to bring him on as a subcontractor to me. Um, but that being said, he's already done a bunch of the work. Uh, he's already started. He's already started requesting some stuff. The developer hasn't sent him everything because he's waiting for the contracts to be signed. But there's already some work. So it's, the work's already being moved forward to hit the timeline that we were a little concerned about with the possibility of some of this being eligible to come online. I what, did. Sorry. Within the next two months, I'll set. I'll call through the proposed general plan and, and the rest of the RDA and try to ascertain the objectives. Those objectives you guys have to be agreeable with because they have, they'll be part of the assumptions that go into the, the numbers. And if I get out there and do it all and the objectives that you're trying to achieve aren't reflected, that screws up the financial performance, but it also screws up all of the other, you know, what I call the intangibles. So, But I'll get that out as quickly as you point. The, the general plan proposal that I read pretty well outlines it. It's pretty, I think I can call most of everything that I need out of there. So I did talk to Garrett. He's on his way in. He did, he does have the contract. He says, well, this have not voted on it. Everything's fine. I said, well, I don't think they received the contract here. He was trying to figure out what had happened in his email. So he'll be here. So if you want uh, to have him send it to you, you want to write before your commission meeting, maybe do another RDA meeting or something like that you're welcome to. Or we can just wait for two weeks, put it back on the agenda, bring it to back to you, hoping that you've had all your questions answered, there's not any concerns. So it's however you want to proceed forward. This is more of an information point of view. Thank okay. you. Thank Thanks. There it is.
Okay, thank you. Appreciate your time. Uh, we'll look for a motion to adjourn the RDA board meeting. So moved. So, yeah. Second. Motion and second to adjourn the RDA board meeting. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. We've adjourned our RDA board meeting. We will now move into a work session. We'll begin with a Nine Springs Ranch presentation by Brock Nelson, right? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, just to introduce it, so uh, staff has been reviewing the Nine Springs Ranch um, development agreement along with their document of what they are requesting. Um, as they've been going through the process, uh, since the development agreement is uh, one of the you know, one of the major items for this, I thought maybe it'd be good for the applicant to address you and kind of figure out how to proceed with the public. Uh, portion, if you want neighborhood meetings, uh, public outreach, how, how you'd like to kind of proceed as well. So I'll turn it over to them. Thanks. Thanks for your time. Um, so yeah, we just wanted to basically introduce the project a little bit more formally to you all. Um, I know we've discussed it a little bit and you've probably heard about it around the time a little. Um, and so, step up here, I, I brought this as just kind of a overview of the our, our boundary line um, what the project is from you know maybe like a 30,000 foot view um, what we've really tried to kind of tailor this project towards is really the outdoors kind of extreme sports amenities that Utah is known for and so this this uh, particular one does not show it but um, within the project we've provided um, 53 yeah, 53 miles of a trail system. Um, 33 of those miles will just be for public use, come and use them at your leisure. The other 20 are anticipated to be accessed via lift uh, for downhill mountain biking. Uh, to range for all different skill levels and types, you know, from beginners and all the way up. So, um, also as a part of the amenities, what we planned, um, got another one that kind of shows it a little bit better. For uh, kind of a winter sports area, <clears throat> we are not trying to compete with Snow Basin at all and be a ski resort in, on our own, but we hope to kind of tailor to a, a different crowd, right? Um, so we've got tubing hills and some freestyle stuff and things that will just be accessed with one small lift and confined to one area. Um, and then in the summertime, this area transfers into where there would be like a, a zipline coaster and an alpine slide type of an amenity there. Um, and then I think that's basically the, it's basically the outdoorsy amenities. Oh, um, in this area, the kind of our kind of core village um, we've got laid out here um, a couple hundred thousand square feet of different commercial uses um, probably the, the main ones would be uh, there's we've got planned 600 hotel rooms um, probably broken out into two possibly three different hotel uh, users but the main focus there is um, not, not saying they've committed or anything, but a Great Wolf Lodge style of an amenity. Something that kind of brings a, bit, a more of a family focused, family oriented hotel with the, you know, water amenities and, you know, slides and all that kind of stuff um, that would be a part of that. Um, so, anyway, that's that. Um, so, 600 yeah. rims divided by. How many properties, or is it all in one property, or? Um, we don't we don't know exactly yet. That's why I say well, I would anticipate probably at least two, possibly three properties. Um, the vision there would be one is tailored more for like a family-centered, you know, user, and then the other one might be a little bit more of a high-end user. Um, the the idea to put one all 601 user. I don't know if that makes financial sense. It's like a, a, a Grand America almost, you know. So quite, quite a large user there. So, so you're, you're 
your three units would not be in that same resort area. It's going to be in three different areas within the oh, no, no, whole they project. Oh no, they'll all be confined okay. to this area. Okay. Uh, that's where we are kind of that whole resort core is planned to stay. We okay. don't necessarily want to have it sprawled everywhere. So okay. We want to keep it confined, keep it centrally located, easy to use, and so forth. Um, as far as the res residential side of it, um, it's kind of broken out into different areas with different uses. Um, everything from you know a higher density area that would include some like a condo, townhome style um, residences, and then all the way up to estate lots, which would be probably one acre minimums up to five, possibly ten acre, ten, ten acre lots, um, and then everywhere in between. What are you proposing for your overall density of residential product? So currently we're proposing 2,740 mixed residential uses on 2,323 acres. That does not include the hotel, hotels, no, no, those are or the commercial space. Yeah. How are you going to get that many in there? I mean, so, what's the plan? Because it sounds to me like you're going to be putting house upon house upon house. Yeah. So um, if, if you look at the mountain side up there, there's a lot of ridges and there's valleys that sit in between. So we've, we've really tried to focus the development to stay in those valleys, mainly to protect the aesthetics of the area. Um, so from what we, the studies that we've done up to this point, probably 90-ish percent, you wouldn't see for, for, for most of the county. You would, would see some as you get up onto Trappers a little bit more, but from the rest of the county standpoint, you really wouldn't see a majority of it. Um, and then we are, those are, the, those numbers are based on the conceptual layouts that we've done. We obviously still have to go through and, you know, do some more in-depth layouts, you know, which the geotech will go into that and some other studies. So, so help me with what I'm looking at here. You've got Purple, red, blue, green, aqua, yeah. yellow, <laughs> yeah. mustard, and brown. Yes. Are those what you're proposing as the development enclaves? Yes. Yep. And then the green area is open space? Is that what you're saying? Correct. Yeah. So what's the percentage of land develop, developed as opposed to open space? So open space overall... Uh, I can't remember the exact percentage, but I believe it's like 60, mid 60 percent okay. of the land is, is remained as open space. I believe it's, don't quote me on exact numbers, but it's around 14 or 1500 acres would retain as open space. And then the different colors of pods are uh, centered to different, you know, residential types. Right, so like the things that are closer down here, so into this purple area, are going to be where some some of the higher density uses would be, and then you've got your sing, single family lots spread right here. They're just different areas of development. The estate lots are planned to be up in the brown, and possibly the yellow. So you've got a road network work that has a couple of circles, and then are you planning on doing roads off those, or is that? pretty much your transportation road network and you'll be doing the single family homes along those roadways. So those, that's just the backbone road. Just the backbone. We, we, we would have other roads that would come off those and tie into different areas. So the main entrance to it is over off of Trapper's Loop. Correct. And so your off ramp. So what about down in this yeah, so the yellow area? We've been in with UDOP for their review, we're still working through that on the main access point. The secondary access point um, actually, let's see, comes off right down here on Creekside. Creekside Drive in Mount Green was our point, your, the main secondary access point. Um, we don't necessarily plan to shut off any of the existing accesses, um, but we don't really want to drive traffic through those current ones. We want to keep them mainly focused on trappers and then with the others being, you know, not as commonly used. Because in that purple area, you're going to have people wanting to go off into the green area, I mean, in the yellow area. 
discovery or whatever it is point. Say that one more time. I was going to say, why would, if I had the place, why would I want to go from purple all the way up and around to the blue, I mean to the violet or whatever you want to call it, up to the purplish one to the red, reddish one, and then out through the, the, uh, you're, you're saying if you're in this, why would yeah. you drive all the way up and over? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, obviously we can't say that we're going to stop all traffic, right? Like, that would just, that's not not really possible. You, we will have some traffic that will go through the highlands and down creek sites like <coughs> that, but the really the flow of it really will push most people out towards Travers. It's, it's a little bit easier to access that way. Okay. So, but yes, you will get some that do go through there, and, and we have our, our traffic engineer has looked at that, and, and, and it is a part of their traffic study. So, but over on the other side, as it comes down through that blue, green, and into the yeah, yeah. what what's that doing, traffic wise? Yes. Um, so. Currently, we're, we're leaving that as a future area. We are working out a couple of points down at the bottom here. There's two, um, but we haven't fully got those resolved at this point. So that's just a future potential. And then infrastructure, what are the plans for that? Just generally, I know you don't have detailed plans for that. Yeah, um, so we've had, we have had conversations with Mountain Green Sewer Improvement District, um, as well as, I mean, we're, we've had, we've been in with Rock Mountain Power and all those, you know, all the utility providers to have them run kind of an analysis on what it would take, so it's still in the works, I guess, you know what I mean? What's your plan with culinary? As far as? Who, you, who would be providing it? Um, so Highlands, um, with their new well and that kind of stuff that the plan would be to just connect onto the Highlands system. Um, we would probably help loop that system to really improve it. And is there a secondary water? Not, not that we're planning on at this point. So, as as, you know, we were trying to, from the architectural standpoint and landscaping standpoint, we want to try to preserve as much of the kind of natural beauty as we can. So, you know, landscaping-wise, we'd like to see as much natural landscape stay as possible. Uh, and then, you know, architecturally, you know, try to hold a, a good high standard of what will be built there, because we, our last intent is to have a production home builder come up and do anything up here. So we want to hold things to a high standard. And, you know, this is a project that's, you know, we've anticipated to be probably 15 years overall and so it's we definitely have a long-term vision in the county it's not just a you know one and done type of deal so we want to make sure that we hold a high standard and preserve the area so we know that we need to do a development agreement for a project like this are you working on your design standards and so forth for the we project are. yep and where is that in the development process in terms of how far along are you? So we've been through two reviews so far. Uh, we are making adjustments for the third time and our hope is to resubmit for another review here in the next couple of weeks. So you're talking about reviews with the, our staff? Yes. Okay. Yep. So your questions were or maybe more your questions in terms of the public of the process. Yeah. In addition to what we know they have to do, which is planning commission and county commission. Yeah. yeah so we 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 did hold a, a public meeting at the junior high. It's probably been a little over a year ago, um, which we had decent turnout and really for the most part it was relatively positive. I would say. Um, so we just want to maybe get your guys' opinions on, you know, just what Josh said, like, you know, public outreach. We're obviously going to do some more of that. Um, is there anything from your guys' standpoint that you feel like would be beneficial? Um, as, as, and as 
as far as your guys' review of the project, how would you like us to proceed in that fashion? So you guys can have as much time to look at it and, you know, review it as, as needed. So historically we've had really two projects that are probably similar in scale, either in size or in number of units, and that's the Snow Basin project and Wasatch Peaks project. Um, Snow Basin is probably most like this project in terms of, of size. Yeah. For both of those projects, the developer um, had a, a work group set up with a couple of members of the Planning Commission and a couple of members of the County Council or Commission at the time. Um, and I think those have been positive in that it, it allows you to get some feedback from the groups that are going to eventually review your, your applications. So that may be something you want to consider. And, and Josh could help set that up. You know, we could get a couple of, of members of each group to, to participate in that. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of steps to a project like this because it is so large. Um, and, and a lot of public hearings and, and discussions that will obviously take place. Um, I mean, as far as I think the commission is concerned, you know, we're, we're looking for you to go through that same process as everybody else and, and walk through the planning commission process and then through the, the county commission process. Um, but that would be my suggestion is, is a work group. I think it would be helpful. Okay. Yeah, that's great. How many years have you had on uh, I've seen it. I've seen You've it. seen it. I've been there. Robert's been there. there. So there's two that have not. Um, it's very, it's actually, I think, very, I think, think Lane itself will be up there and actually see it for like, the mm -hmm. It is. It is. And, and probably see the planning commission. That's something that we did with, with both, because I was on the planning commission during the Snow Basin project. Um, we did a, a site tour for that. He was there for that as well, as I recall. Um, so I think that would be helpful for both the, the planning commission and the county commission. Yeah. Well, you made a comment about the houses being on top of houses, so to speak. But that, when you get up there and you see it, there are the houses will not be on top of each other. And you'll be able to see that from the top. And as you go up, you can kind of see where the different paws are at. You will have, you know, the condo area is a part of that, that 2300. The townhouses are part of that 2300. <coughs> so by the time you get those done, <coughs> the estate lots and some of these other uh, mid entry lots, uh, they're, they're, they're actually spread out a whole lot better than what the condo is. Yes. And, and, we, and we're always open to like setting up some more uh, site visits. I know we had a couple from this group as well as Planning Commission come up, and we'd love to do it again. And for those that weren't able to, or those that did, if you want to go again, great. But yeah. Is your intention for the the roads and infrastructure to be public or private? What's that? Do you intend for the infrastructure to be public or private in terms of roads and public? Public. Yeah. So. Um, the other big piece that I think plays into a project of this size is, is the financial aspect and having a good financial organization go through and, I mean, Zion's Public Finance is one that's done several analysis for us. There's there's some other public finance groups. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. So I think that's a, big, that's a big help for us to be able to look at that and understand, you know, what the impact is to the county. Because yeah. there's certainly a financial impact Good and bad, right? On both sides, there's there's an impact both to revenue and expenditure. So, yeah. understanding that is helpful for us. Yeah, and I believe that is in, that has been a part of our submittal packet. So, yeah, I believe that all that science data and all that is in there. Yeah. Awesome. You should have that. I hope it is. So we we, we do, haven't seen it yet, but it that's because it's still in the process, and we usually don't see it till it gets a little further down the road. Yeah. It's, a, it's a pretty thick book. Yeah. I'd imagine. <laughs> There's a lot, of, a lot of aspects to that. Sorry, Robert. So if we do the work groups, then I guess the only other thing I would suggest is that as you get ready to do your submission to the Planning Commission, I probably do would do 
one other public open house with the public to show how your plans have been refined, you know, maybe some examples of the architecture that you're plan that you're um, planning documents would require or suggest would be developed so that people can get a feel for that. Yeah. You obviously can't give them a design for every home and every condo project, but if they could get an example of the types of architecture that you're planning on using and and, and then show the updates to your plan since that last meeting, which was a long while ago. Yeah, it, it, was, yeah, it was April, I believe, of last year. So we had about 150 people there. We're going to have the planning hearings, you know, the planning commission hearings and the public hearing at the county commission, and so we'll have those. But I think it's just good as part of laying the groundwork to let people see what's going on, how it's developed since then. And yeah. Whether you do it in one or two is up to you. But. Okay. Sorry, I apologize. I was late. No, um, I might. I might rewind all the way back to the first, but um, so is the plan to get all the information out, get all the comments back in, do all <clears> your <throat> check boxes to rezone, or is is the zoning in place, or what? No, this is a this would be an implemented zone pursuant to a development agreement and specific planning standards. Okay. That's what Mark Miller suggested. Our Any other questions? I don't. Um, well, there's a ton of questions, but I think for <laughs> the purpose of what you guys are doing yeah. today, it's definitely. Yeah. The, the only other thing I just that comes to mind is the, uh, the material, the soils, the geological. Is, have, have you conceptually looked into that, I guess, to make sure you're... Yeah. Okay, perfect. So GSH did our, our conceptual overview of that stuff, and then CMT is doing that for the main access point um, with UDOT. So Great. Great. Oh, there's, to address that, there's been a lot of... Uh, uh, concern in that area over on that mountainside. As we've done the, the studies, what we found is that if you look at the geological studies, a lot of people don't understand this, but you probably would, Jerry. The mountainside over a thousand years has come down to where it's at right now. Most of your hazardous uh, areas have already been built on over there. Not all of them but about 90% of them have been. And so what you've got is you've got the loose soil that's kind of at the bottom. That's where the highlands is at. That's where you know everything is at is right down there at the bottom. As you move up, that's rock, and it's a real solid base. So we don't believe that you're going to have anywhere near the issues that they've had in the past uh, based on where everything is settled over the last thousand or two thousand years, whatever it's been, and uh, the geological studies are telling us the same thing. Yeah, I, I think all we need is that professional geologist to look at it according to our code, and we're, we're good. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay, any other questions or comments? Matt, you good? Okay. Well, thank you. Appreciate thank you. your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Planning Commission Zone Text Amendment. Sure. Planning Community. <laughs> text Amendment. Um, so we had the work session uh, with the Planning Commission and the County Commission uh, back on uh, June 20th, I believe. 
after that work session, the planning commission and staff held, I believe it was three additional work sessions, possibly four, um, where we went through the entire document. I noted the planning commission's recommendations and updated the, the text accordingly. Uh, we took it to the planning commission for recommendation. I want to say it was the first meeting in August. They recommended approval. Uh, and so instead of just putting it on the agenda here, I wanted to make sure to see how you wanted to handle it. Would you like some work to have a work session or two to kind of go through the, the text, or do you want me to just bring it forward? Have we, have we received an updated copy of the text? You have not yet. Not yet. I appreciate all the work you put into it, Josh, because I know there's a lot of questions initially from the Planning Commission of what's going on, and so appreciate all the time and effort Thank you put into it. That. I don't know about you other commissioners. I'd prefer to see the text and at least have some type of discussion about it. But I agree. Well, I think we would. The, the only question is in what's the context? Are we, do you want to do a work session first and then have it on for approval, or do you want to just have it on for review and approval on a given night? I think that's what he's asking. Yeah, I'd, my thought would be a work session. I just think that it's too important to not have okay. a work session. It's my let's, thoughts. Let's schedule it for the next one. I will email you a copy of the staff report plus the text uh, with an explanation of the colors within the text uh, tomorrow. And then that will give you approximately two weeks to review it. Perfect. Sounds great. Thank you. Yep. No problem. Thank you. Great. Okay. Any other work session <laughs> items one has to cover? Uh, well, we could reconvene the RDA meeting and, and vote on that contract if you've had a chance to look at it, or we can hold off for a couple of weeks. I haven't looked at it. When did it come down? Yeah. It just came through right as he was finishing, right, right as James walked out of the room. So. No, I think I'd like to read it. Okay. Let's just... <laughs> let's. Let's leave it to that then. Twenty. I was going to say you must be a woman if you multitask like that. <laughs> it was twenty. It was twenty-seven minutes ago. Yeah, I, I skim read it pretty quick, but a lot of it's boilerplate, you know. Whereas, 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 but. Can I just ask a question? Yes. How you want to proceed? So there was an error in the, in the packet that went out to you for the action items. One of the staff reports got doubled up for the Thurston staff report instead of the Round Valley staff report. I don't know how that didn't get in there. Um, since you haven't seen the staff report, we've called the applicant and mentioned that we're going to have to continue it to the next meeting. But I know the applicant did want to speak about that item, so I don't know if you want to open the item and let her talk and then continue it or how you want to proceed. The, uh, which item is that? Well, That's she's... item number seven on the action. If they actually come, I wouldn't mind talking Morgan to Valley them. Morgan Valley Partners. Yeah, can you, yeah. do you have anything you could, at least just a map or something to We have all the maps. Or? We even have a staff report. Everything was written. I don't know how it didn't get uploaded. Okay. Somehow, it, the, the thirst and rezone got sent twice. <coughs> yeah, it did. So we can present it, we can bring up the maps, and then if you want to continue it to the next meeting, make a decision, we can send you the staff report to review. That way the applicant would have a chance to talk about it. Yeah, when was applicant notified? Uh, I just found out about the error uh, this afternoon when I was preparing for presentations and things like that. Yeah, I, Chair, I don't know what you think, but I wouldn't mind, if you could, it'd be nice to just have you send just that, those documents, and still at least discuss it. Um, then we can decide. Yeah, I think that's okay. fine. We can still discuss it. If there's enough questions, we can continue it to the next meeting. Okay. Do you want us to email that to you now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. This might be the most um, land use items I've ever seen on one agenda. Yeah, I agree. Oh, <laughs> it was after Labor Day weekend. Maybe they were working on it. I guess. 
I don't think there's any public interaction right now. <laughs> actually, actually, there is. It's a work session. <laughs> um, I think with that, we can adjourn our work session, and we've got about five minutes before our regular meeting will begin. Perfect. Commission meetings since she's closing her doors after this. <laughs> she's closing them. Why? She's closing them. I never asked her. I think less than this, but I haven't asked her. Glass. <laughs> yeah, she's closing up after putting that whole nice baker in her bowl and just shutting the door herself. That's too bad. I know. The next meeting, her raspberry rolls. That's way too bad. Wow. Wow. I gotta go. Did you know Mama Lakes is closing? No. Her banana bread. Her banana bars, too, because she's closing up soon. On my birthday. <laughs> Hey, Gary. Hey. Nice haircut. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. I'm trying so, to I'm I'm stick around and see what we do there. Did, did we win something or something? Oh, we'll, we'll we'll that did, did we win a case or something? Is that way you got a haircut? Celebrate? <laughs> no, I just needed my experience. Have we had any good news? Yep. Yeah. 
Okay, it's five o'clock. We will go ahead and begin the Morgan County Commission meeting September 5th, 2023. Uh, earlier this evening at four o'clock, we could meet as an RDA board for a few minutes. We then had a work session. Now we're beginning our regular, regularly scheduled meeting. Uh, we welcome all those in attendance here in the room today and those who are uh, viewing our meeting online. And just as a reminder, you can view all of the Morgan County Commission meetings if you ever need or would like to. Um, those are available through YouTube. There's a link through the county website. Uh, we will begin with an invocation and Pledge of Allegiance, and I've asked Commissioner McConnell to take care of that. Father in heaven, we're grateful this time for the opportunity that we have to come before you on this beautiful evening. We're grateful for the blessings that we enjoy, for uh, the rainfall that we've received and the blessing that that is to our community. We're grateful, Father, for this opportunity to meet and discuss items important to our community and the residents. And, and for those who have att are attending with us, we pray that thy blessings will be upon us as we meet together and confer about these important matters that we might enjoy thy blessings and uh, that we might have a spirit of cooperation and good and open communication. We're grateful again for all that we have and say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner McConnell. Uh, we have one consent item this evening. That is the review and approval of the August 15th, 2023 meeting minutes. Are there any adjustments to the minutes that have not yet been provided to Julie? Okay, seeing none, we'll look for a motion to approve the August 15th, 2023 meeting minutes. So moved. Second. The motion, a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. Uh, declarations of conflict of interest with any commissioners for any items on this evening's agenda. I guess with the discussion of the Cottonwoods at Mountain Green and the trails, I should disclose that I'm a member of that association and a resident of that community. Okay. Any additional? Okay, seeing no additional, we will move to our public comment period. This is an opportunity for the public to address the commission. We do have on our agenda uh, one public hearing, and that is the rezone request. That's item G1. So there will be opportunity to address the public or to address the commission specific to that item at that point in the meeting. All other items on the agenda, if you have any public comment, now is your time to address the commission. We'd ask that you come forward and state your name. Okay. Hi, my name is Sarah Namalka. I'm with Rockworth Companies. Um, I am here representing the Morgan Valley Partners LLC. So we were supposed to be on the commission tonight, or the, the meeting tonight, and unfortunately got pushed due to a staff error. And I just wanted to thank everybody for your time in reviewing it, and we're really hoping to push it up across the board. So we'll see you back in a couple of weeks, but just wanted to say thanks. So oh. we're actually, we, we've, we noticed it. Okay. We haven't seen the information in our packet yet. Okay. But what we would still like to do is we'll still go to that item and let you 
speak to us and, and maybe we, we may have some questions. I don't know because we haven't seen it yet. Yeah. It, there's a good chance that we'll postpone it till the next meeting at that point. But okay. if that's okay with you, yeah, we'll, we'll still happy. leave it on the agenda and have you. We just got us. it in our email. So they did email it to us just a few minutes ago, oh, but we haven't all had the chance to really go through no it. No worries. So. Thank you, guys. Hey, thank you. My name is Heidi Dorius. I am late in coming here, and this is my first time doing this, so I might not be doing this right. But um, on the agenda is some infrastructure for these market, and I'm just curious if that, um, if the will sword was ever issued, that they actually can continue because uh, Cotton Creek Water Company did not issue a will sword, and um, I'm curious where they're receiving their water, if they don't have wells or storage. And so I am curious about that before you move that forward. Has that been um, approved? So we, this is just an opportunity for you to speak to us. It's not okay. really a, an interactive question and answer, but we can certainly jot down your question, and then okay. during that item, we can ask the applicant. Okay. Staff. So that is my question: is if they okay. don't have any, if they don't have a wheel serve for a water company that actually has water and storage, that's my question. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bart Smith, Mount Green Highlands Water Company. I don't know if you want me to address it right now or if you'd like to address this later. We just found out information today from the Public Service Commission. That's our service area. There cannot be another water company developed in our service area unless we give them permission. Do you want me to elaborate a little more, or would you rather discuss this when you're talking to them, or if you have questions at that time? Any questions right now? I mean, I, it'd probably be good to hear from the... I'd the like to do it during the time, and if we need to, we can ask that at that point. Yeah, thank you, Barb. Seeing no additional public comment, we will move to uh, action item number one. This is Mr. James Ebert, discussion decision on the RDA agreements. Um, you may recall from our previous RDA meeting, we discussed this. Uh, the contracts that are part of this discussion were emailed out just recently, so you probably haven't had a chance to review them thoroughly. But wanted to give an opportunity to ask any questions of James at this point. I can talk, just talk briefly about it if you'd like me to, Chairman. Yeah, that'd be great. So basically, it's just an addendum to the contract to bring on a subcontractor to do uh, RDA work in the context of creating a project area, a budget, and other sort of requirements that the statute has for RDAs to uh, adopt a project or development into a designated RDA area. And uh, the addendum just allows me to bring a subcontractor on. There is a revenue source that is uh, being billed through the RDA um, and, a, and a process to recoup those dollars um, so the county doesn't have to pay anything to get this to me. Okay. Any questions? So. So that's going, and this is probably in our RDA, but when this gets paid to you or to the company, and it's basically being paid before December 15th, then we receive that money back from the developers during that same time frame, or is it later, or when? Uh, so there's just a schedule for... Uh, um there's just a schedule dates for delivery, and those schedule dates are just based upon when the subcontractor feels like they can deliver the reports. Um, and there's a just, there's a uh, final date on there that is the projected date of finish um, with the payment schedule attached. 
think there's three payment schedules on there, a beginning, then a kind of right around the middle of it, and then an ending date. And Commissioner Fackrell, your question about how soon does the developer reimburse the county, is that correct? Mm -hmm. So the contract currently says within 30 days, but that can be updated if we feel it needs to be. That, that was just um, the same time frame that the county has after receiving an invoice um, for work completed to pay the, um, the subcontractor. Okay. And that's going to pay the the contract within the person that we're contracting with, right? But there's a, a majority of it's for subcontract. I think there's a three or four percent administrative fee that I'm charging. If you take out that part, I'm for it. So it's not going to become a general fund, right? No, there there is no cost to the county. It's similar to a public infrastructure district where the developer pays for the, the fees of the consultant. Or or like an engineer, surveyor, any type of con where we contract out from the county. Okay. The developer pays those costs. Okay. Yeah, so what we, we have before us is an agreement to amend our agreement with Ebert Solutions for the amount in question, the $26,000 for the cost of the service, and an agreement with the developer saying that they will reimburse the county for those costs. Correct. Yeah, that portion of it will actually be with the RDA. Through the RDA, the sorry. Yes. They, they will reimburse the RDA, and the RDA will reimburse the county. Okay. And so, um, that was that was my mistake that it didn't get out sooner and so it was my understanding we're bringing this back in a couple weeks um, if you have any questions now we we can try to answer them but if we can just email back and forth any other changes or suggestions i'll probably reach out as well just to make sure we've got everyone feels comfortable with the agreement I think we just need to update the payment terms to reflect the dates of execution. Oh, okay. yeah, paid on or before September 1. To update that. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll make a motion that we postpone this item until our next meeting. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to postpone item number one till our next meeting, giving us opportunity to review the agreements. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully we got you out of here in time for your next meeting. All right. Uh, item number two, this is discussion decision uh, appointments for new members of the Historical Society Board. Um, I just want to make comment that uh, Morgan County has an amazing um, community of folks who are willing to volunteer in a lot of aspects. We have volunteers that serve on many boards within the county and we really appreciate those volunteers. One of those groups of volunteers is those who serve on the Historical Society Board and they act um, to give direction as well as um, information. They're, they're a great source of information for our county historian. Um, so we have four openings on the Historical Society Board um, and we'll look to, to fill those openings. I forwarded the applications. We, we only had one applicant for each of those areas. We did notice it, public notice as, as required. Um, before we get to that, I just want to give a special thanks to three of the outgoing members of the Historical Society Board, Tina Kelly, Who's here with us, Tina? Would you stand up for us, really quick? <laughs> Going to embarrass her really good. <laughs> Tina has served over a decade on the Historical Society Board, um, and actually, I think it's quite a lot more than a decade, isn't it, Tina? Like 15 years. 
so it's been a very long time. I won't try to do the math in my head right now. <laughs> um, we appreciate Tina and her contributions to the Historical Society Board. Also, um, Mr. Dick Slate and Connie Lewis, um, both of which are not here this evening, but want to give a special thanks to them for their years of, of dedicated service on that Historical Society Board. Um, they've contributed much, and we appreciate them. With that, um, we have four potential appointments to the board. Um, Cheryl Gross, who's here with us this evening in the back corner there. Cheryl has served on the board for many years as well and uh, would like to be reappointed to the board, and I think that's great. Sarah, Cheryl also uh, chairs the nonprofit um, Morgan Historical. Cheryl, tell me the, the correct name to that because I'm going to get it wrong. Morgan Valley Preservation. Thank you, Morgan Valley Preservation Organization. And they've worked uh, really hand in hand with business owners on Commercial Street to help preserve that, that historical district. And we, we appreciate their work there. Um, for the, uh, Cheryl represents the South Morgan area, by the way. For the Peterson Enterprise area, Whitney Croft, who's with us this evening. Hi, Whitney. Mark Worden uh, from North Morgan and Shannon Key for the Mountain Green area. Mark and Shannon, I believe, are, are both not with us today. Um, they had other commitments. Their applications are included in the packet. Are there any questions? Okay. So uh, that'll look for a motion then on the appointment of new members of the Morgan County Historical Society Board. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we um, appoint members of the Historical Society Board um, with Shannon Key being from the Mountain Green area, Mark Warden being from North Morgan Rand Valley area, Whitney Croft being from the Peterson Enterprise area, and Cheryl Gross from the South Morgan area. Second. The motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Motion passes and thank you. We appreciate your willingness to serve and look forward to your contributions. Okay, action item number three, Commissioner McConnell. So um, as part of the active transportation committee meeting, we had representatives from the Master Association at the Cottonwoods come in and visit and um, raise again the issue of the trails in the Cottonwoods, particularly the trail from the upper roundabout pond down to Old Highway Road, which is one that is to be maintained by the county. Um, we have not been actively maintaining that at a level anyway of to particularly the asphalt of it. I think there has been maintenance occasionally with respect to trimming back away from the, the asphalt edges and so forth, but not the asphalt itself. And they wondered if we could, they would said they would be willing to take over ownership and maintenance of that if the county would, you know, contribute something towards its um, bringing it back into a suitable condition. Um, and so we put this on the agenda for purposes of discussing that. Um, I don't blame you. It indicated that Public Works was going to try to get a bid, but I haven't seen that come across yet. I haven't seen it either yet, and I, I Brett was gone. The latter part of last week so I could not get anything. I think that would give us an idea of the, the amount but one of the thoughts that we had even discussed was um, at that meeting not here but I wanted to raise with you if we had an idea of the cost if there was some amount that we thought we could put in towards that we could convey and make the in installments on that amount over a period of three to five years or something like that and then they would utilize their funds to make up the difference and get the repairs done sooner rather than later, <coughs> get it back into a good condition. Part of what happens is the, the large trees alongside the trail tend to send up roots that cause it to buckle and be pretty difficult. There are some pretty rough places at this point. So. There's not a specific proposal. I think if we were to, to do that, we'd want to know, we'd want to get the bid from Public Works so that we had an idea of the amount. And then I think that we could plan that into our budget if that's the way that we wanted to move forward over the next, whatever the period of that term was. 
or you could say no we want to keep the trail we want it to maintain it as a public trail and we just need to start budgeting for and causing the maintenance to occur the other thing was is also we're not giving up I mean it's still going to be a public trail no matter what it'll be a public trail it's just that we're going to be basically paying them to take care of the trail so we don't have to which means it can remain open during the winter if they want just one just we'll only be paying one time to get it right not on to get it up to back to right. right. not on an ongoing basis right and well, I guess I the way I would that. characterize it would be available for public use yes pursuant to the terms of the development agreement but it would be a trail owned by the association right I know Commissioner Newton and I are planning on meeting with Brett within the next week to discuss his budget so we can ask him about that we can yeah I, I think we should make right on what we committed to do I don't really know when that was committed to, but it long before us when the development agreement was <laughs> done for the but we need to. So it's been, but I'd rather not on it personally. I mean, there's trails of two types within there. There are that trail, which and, and it, it extends up through and then becomes essentially sidewalk, wider sidewalk that goes alongside the sides of some of the residential developments. And is that there's not a maintenance issue there other than who's going to plow that in the winter time but it's not like it's um, becoming it's not in poor condition the sidewalks are in good condition it's just this asphalt section and then there are other trails that again are available for public use but are they're on HOA land and now in some instances on some private land but those are more mountain biking types of trails So just wanted to bring it up, bring it to your attention. I don't think there's any decision on it, but if we can follow up with Brett and then I think, you know, if we get that proposal and that amount, then we ought to discuss, maybe come up with a specific, I could come back with a specific recommendation and we could vote on it. Sounds great to me. And so what we would do is put it under our new budget for next year, and my my thoughts were to use part of the sales tax for that. And I've seen that amount of sales tax so far. Instead of coming out of the general fund, per se, from property taxes. Yeah, I think this this whole thing just underscores the need to have a funding source for maintenance and repairs if we're going to own trails. We period. do we do have that. That was part of the sales tax that we went and approved last year, and it was to be used partially some of it for trails and trails maintenance. So you can't take it all just for roads, and you can't use it just for to help with whatever else it is you need. Part of it has to go towards trails. That's right in the law. Yep. So anyway, that, I think that's the other portion we need to know is what what is that revenue? I've already got it. If you'd like it, so, so far. Yeah. Chair, could we also just for notes purposes also include in that the the airport bunker, so we address that as, as well. In the, our, berm. Oh, the berm. Oh, the berm. The berm. Yeah. We could use impact fees on that, couldn't we? We'd really need to address that, too. Can you? I, I don't think you can use impact fees for that. Okay. No, I didn't know. Impact fee, did. The airport's not an impact fee. Okay. No. Okay. Anything else? No. Okay. Let's move to action item number four. Josh, you're up. Uh, these marketplace uh, small subdivision and site plan were approved back in December. Um, they have been trying to get their will serve letters from Highlands Water and Cottonwood Mutual Water to no avail. Um, so a third water company is in the process of being certified. Uh, that has indicated that they'd be willing to provide water to Lee's Marketplace. Um, as part of your packet was a letter or an email from the Utah Division of Drinking Water 
in which the uh, water engineer that is responsible for reviewing the plans and taking the water company through certification says that they are well on their way, they're not there yet. Uh, as such, uh, Lee's Marketplace approached staff and asked if we could issue a uh, at-risk permit basically to allow them to start putting in improvements and in infrastructure. Uh, the code doesn't allow me to do that. Um, the code is clear, it requires a will serve letter from a certified water company, uh, which they don't have yet. Uh, we have will serve letters from a water company that's not a water company yet. They're going through the certification process, which um, they're not valid. So uh, I mentioned that they could request an app, uh, approval app for at-risk permit from the county commission because I don't have the authority to grant that, uh, which is why they, they're in the audience and they'd be willing to speak. Uh, as far as the water service areas that were talked about earlier, I don't believe Utah Division of Drinking Water looks at service areas that way. Um, currently within Mountain Green, I believe there are water lines for both Cottonwood Mutual and highlands that cross and if that were the if, if the state of utah looked at water service areas as strictly as what was implied that wouldn't have been allowed in the first place so that being said if you have two water companies that are not going to provide a will serve letter and a third water company comes in goes through the certification process and becomes certified to provide water to that development then that will serve letter that that certified water company would provide would be valid with that, I'll turn it over to the applicant and they can make their case. Thank you. Before we get to that, I'm going <laughs> to, I didn't realize the water company issues would be an issue here. So my firm does represent the water company that is seeking certification from the state. Okay, go ahead. Hello. My name is Brian Stevenson with Stokes Stevenson Development Partners. Um, hopefully, just want to clarify uh, the process and answer questions. We have our team available. We have um, Jonathan Badger, who's the present CEO of Leaf Marketplace, who's coming to town. We also have Arnold Construction represented here. We have Associated Foods represented here with Jared Mitchell also. Um, he's over all new expansion for the Associated Foods brands and then Zach Swenson with the development team. So uh, thanks for taking the time. As Josh mentioned, we came in to meet on this issue and we understand that water is is an issue here and we are coming in as a developer saying we develop real estate, we want to build a grocery store with Jonathan with the Badger family for Leafs Marketplace to serve this community, to serve the Mountain Green community. We feel like it's going to be uh, valuable to the community, it's a value add. And so we're here simply to say we the water is, is a very difficult issue that we're not going to solve tonight by any means. Um, there is a lot of history there that I don't know all of, honestly, and I'm sure a lot of you know more about that than I do. Frankly, we are a customer and we just want to buy water from somebody. And so we've got a store that is scheduled to be open next summer and there's a lot of financial ramifications that come along with that especially when you're forecasting and planning to buy materials and in Jonathan's case how you staff up a new store how you bring in product and inventory and all those things how you plan your sales for the next year so when we were talking with staff about this potentially just putting a temporary agreement in place that basically says allow us before the winter weather comes to just start building the infrastructure needed that goes under this building so then we don't lose winter conditions time which would allow us to not affect the delivery date of that store and all those decisions that are based on that timeline so our our joint kind of idea together was let's not make this too complicated the infrastructure lines that come out of the building they run out to basically the same place no matter what water company you're using so why not let us start building out that critical infrastructure during the fall and going into winter so that all gets in the ground before the winter weather comes 
knowing that we as the developer, ultimately, we need water for the store. We're more incentivized than anybody to go figure out a solution with everybody on water. But we are saying, we will take that risk and let us just get under construction so then we can figure out that issue with one of the three water companies that have been talked about here tonight. Um, and I'm a strong believer that we'll be able to get one of those three to provide us water, and we'd love to do that. And so we're, we're kind of at the, the mercy of the situation here, but that was the reasoning behind approaching you tonight to hopefully get an approval, which you've seen the draft of that letter asking for a kind of a, a notice to proceed type letter so we can get going. Um, so if there's any questions you have for me, happy to answer them, and also any of the team that I mentioned um, they're happy to answer as well to talk about the store and any of the details you'd like. I, I've got a question, <laughs> and I'm going to be really blunt. Why haven't you guys just left? I mean, you come up here to a, to a county that might not have the rooftops to support your store. I know Lee's is a local um, group, Lee's Market, um, and, and this has been extremely difficult for you guys, and it shouldn't be. There's no reason this should not be difficult. So it's been extremely difficult. I'm surprised you haven't just left. I would do anything in my power to say, what can we do to work this out? Because we have needed some kind of um, grocery amenity in that area for the residents. Um, there's a lot of excitement about Lee's Market coming in. And um, this is the first time I've, I've heard to this degree anyways, what Lee's Market has had to deal with. And, I mean, I'm being real blunt. Why haven't you just said, forget it, we're leaving, because this is too difficult? It's a great question, and we've asked the question internally in the office. I'm sure <laughs> Jonathan's asked the question. I mean, it is the question to be asked, right? But ultimately, we, we believe in the location. We believe in the market. We believe in this whole area. We see growth here. There's a demand here. Like, there's so many things that point to saying this needs to be done. And so, at the end of the day, that's why we keep going, and I guess we like the punishment, I don't know. <laughs> we just want to figure something out. Though. So this is our best attempt at, at getting, at least moving forward. Can you explain the problem to us? What is well, the problem? Why? I think, as, as mentioned here, you have three, two existing water companies between Cottonwood and Highland, and then you have a third potential company, Mountain Green Mutual Water Company. Um, and as I mentioned, there's a history there, but you have the two existing companies who are in the area, and we, we're working to try to get a will circular. That's all we need. We just need a water company to sit here and give you one. So I guess I'm wondering why they won't give you one. Yeah. Um, I think we've asked a question, and there's, there's always costs involved. And then also the Mountain Green Mutual Water Company, uh, the ground that we're acquiring the owner of that ground is part of the Mountain Green Mutual Water Company. And so they're saying, well, hey, we'd love to provide water. Uh, we're in with the state. We submitted. We're getting certified. And we have, as Josh mentioned, we have the letter from the state Department of Drinking Water saying it's in. Application's in. We're reviewing it. It's not ready yet, but showing that it's it should be ready for certification. So I guess that's why. So as I read the letter agreement, there's not really a limitation on the scope of the work you can complete under the building permit. So is this a footing and foundation and infrastructure permit that we're talking about, or is it your full building permit? It, it wouldn't be a full building permit because they wouldn't be allowed to go vertical without water. Okay. So it, I just wanted it. It so just wasn't suggest. specific, and I that's what I thought we were talking about. But I wanted to make sure everybody understood that. Yeah, and we're we obviously want as much leeway as possible because ultimately, like I said before, if we delivered this building and it was completely done, food on the shelves, and there's no water, we're on the line for that. You know, we're financially incentivized in a very good way to figure this out as soon as tomorrow. Do you have a timeline on, on approval for Mountain Green Mutual Water Company? No. No. Josh, the, the, um, 
agenda item is for approval of the preliminary and final plot, correct? Mm. No, no, that's not no. correct. Okay. That's not correct. <laughs> I, I was wondering why it didn't have a plot in the in the packet. I don't know what, how that So the approval is there. actually of of a variance essentially. It's for the county commission to grant basically that agreement is an at risk to allow them to start with so I guess in the situations I've seen with this before, and I hope you understand how I feel. <laughs> I just want to make sure. So worst case scenario, they come in and um, put in footings and concrete. But it sounds like they cannot put in wood until they have a fire hydrant that can. And yeah, you can't go vertical without water. Fire correct, correct. But they, but they can do concrete and footings. Um, well, there's a lot more infrastructure that has to go in before they can even start. Sure. I guess if it were me, I would start on the building because that's a long lead time. But regardless, whatever they put in, the concern would be as if they're on the hook and uh, for some reason there's no water available from here on out for forever. Then do we have a an ability to put the state of that land back into versus just having random footing foundation curb and gutter and 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 that's it and weeds growing through them? I mean, that's a worst case scenario. I I definitely don't see that happening, but I just want to make sure. I would ask that that be added into that agreement that the land be returned to its native state. Just because it's been I was going to say, I don't want it to go back to its native state because there is rocks, weeds, everything else. I'd rather not have that. I'd rather have them partially completed and somebody else come in and take care of it. I, I, I know what you're saying, <laughs> but that's not as bad as seeing half completed subdivisions. Right, the right. infrastructure's in there and the market fell out and they don't, right. they don't build the home. Yeah, I have a question. Are we positive that a the other two water companies will not give you a will serve, or is it because the landowner that you're buying it from is causing the problems? Um, I know there's at least one representative from one of the water companies. There's. There's two of them. They're both here. Okay. You've got all three companies right here, at least the new mountain green water system. You've got Highlands here, and you've got the Cottonwoods here. So my question is, is why have, I mean, I know that the Highlands service areas, maybe not going across that land, but around that land, and they've got their well right there by it, why is it that all of a sudden this person cannot service your property? I don't know. I don't know that they've been, that they don't want to. I think they've been told they cannot. So um, maybe, maybe Rulon can answer that for the new Mount Green Water District, yeah, or maybe Robert can. I don't know. I'm just right. trying to figure this out because it just doesn't seem right that you have not been able to get it from two different companies unless there's somebody holding up the process. Yeah. And like I mentioned before, we're, we're Switzerland, right? Like, we drink right. water. And so I know that there, there has been discussions with both water, all three water companies, and there are, there are obstacles with each of them whether it's a cost or a water share issue or getting certified in the state. So there, there's multiple variables why one couldn't and the other could, right? So um, if you'd like to hear from them, I think you're welcome well, to hear from them. I think the issue is not necessarily that. I approve of having you guys come here. I want you to come. It's been all part of our economic development. I want you here. Um, I think we ought to be having a discussion with the water companies and finding out what's going on. And that's a separate issue. 
and approve them to be able to go ahead and then we can work out with the water companies what we need to with however we have to do it to make it work out yeah maybe Please. just a negotiation of some sort to figure it out and get all entities together and talk about it and if we can and then at that point somebody provide a will serve i agree and that's i think that's the whole spirit of this agreement is that will get figured out and we're confident that we'll figure out a solution there as mentioned though we're not going to sell that tonight what we're hoping for tonight is we just want to keep r and construction busy so they can get in front of this winter weather yeah so we can get in the ground so jonathan can deliver this beautiful store yeah. in the spring summertime so and i'm looking forward to it i really am i'm going to drive down there to get yeah. as soon as we get as soon as we get the interchange in <laughs> otherwise i'm not <laughs> yeah. uh, garrett have you had a chance to review this this letter in agreement i have so i've been making some notes as we've talked to some things that i think are missing um would be just a clarification similar to what Josh stated about the no vertical construction without water. Um, so what would be permitted at risk, I think, can be more clearly defined because in the bullet points it, it only mentions the certificate of occupancy. Um, I, don't, I don't think that the second to last paragraph is legal because it says county agrees not to issue any violation to developer. Um, I think that we can phrase it as the county planning department agrees not to issue any violation and the building department would fall under the county department. But um, the sheriff's office is not a party or, you know, the, the commission can't um, vote to control another elected official and how they have discretion so that's given by the state so if the sheriff issues a citation then the sheriff is within their authority to do so if it comes to my office it's in, within my authority to have discretion to prosecute or not um, and then also our code allows for third party enforcement so i think we can handle two of the four enforcement because that's something that the commission is over and can agree to through the code but i think the other two which is the third party enforcement and the sheriffs um, would not be allowed and so we would have to update um, the the letter to um, to i guess make that in line with our code and then another note i made was adding a revegetation provision and a potential timeline if for some reason water is not allowed but i think those were the three things that i heard through the discussion so i personally would like to get this expedited and, and out the door and i know there, there's probably some revisions to this agreement i'm assuming that do you have any concerns with what he mentioned no i think okay. if what we could get from you and gary we're happy to work with you with our legal <coughs> If we can get approval from you that as long as the things we're talking about is material the same, then that's going to be delegated to staff so we don't have to come back for each revision. Um, and then they can sign it, then we're totally fine to keep working over the next week or so with you and try to get to the final ones. so it's legal. I also think it might be advisable to issue a permit, but limit it to the footings and foundation as opposed to saying we're just doing this on a letter and when we get the water worked out we'll issue a permit. I, I would just do a limited permit, limited to footing and foundation. And when you talk revegetation, Blaine's right, that's just a rocky area. It looks different than it did <laughs> before, but it, it's we're, we're not restoring a, a field, a pasture, and certainly not a mountainside here. It's, um, relatively gravelly area with some some weeds, weeds, on, it. Some weeds <laughs> on it so yeah. but should there be some some work done to rehabilitate it sure i could understand that can yes. i specify putting foundation public infrastructure road absolutely yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah no i agree and our the building slab that's important if you can pour that concrete before winter time cold weather that's obviously really important. so 
echoing what Commissioner McConnell said, Josh, we're, we're still going to do a limited permit where those items are going to be checked off and rebar checked and all the all the items checked that they need to check. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah. Okay. Inspections will be done. Okay. So footings, foundation, slab. public infrastructure, structure in the floor slabs. Yeah, it's basically no vertical. Yeah, horizontal. Putting special water lines. Yeah, that's a good question. Well, we can't even I guess we can do that. That's a good question. How about a third party? A neutral party? <laughs> it may not make each company specific specs, their standards, their regulations. We're happy to work with all three. We just don't want it to be something that slows the process down. There's a, there's a standard trench detail, and there's standards for all coronary water installation. There are standards. I, APWA standards. They've been around for many, 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 many years. But you're you're right. There could be some specifics that each water company would want to see. Is the engineer, county engineer, inspecting the water lines as well? County engineer, uh, I don't know if he inspects the water lines. He might do a, a preliminary inspection. But I think the water engineers for each of the companies does the inspection before they bury it. Why don't we provide for a third party inspection and give the opportunity to each of the water companies to inspect the line within a specified period of days after the request for inspection? And what if there's some... We'll go with the third party inspectors inspection, but if, if they, if, if we're, if you're potentially relying on any of the three, then I think you need to understand what their standards are. Sure. I'm tending to agree with Commissioner Anderson there's probably a standard and the deviations probably are going to be minor but yeah and we're happy to do that as long as it's not something that could hold us up intentionally we're totally happy right and we want to work with all three water companies like there's nothing there but you can understand from our point of view we just want to move forward so not be held up but I think you rely on the third party inspection service and that would be for purposes of moving forward, but give them the opportunity to inspect. Yeah, then that would be based upon what a third party, Josh, or I mean, is Josh going to find a third party, or just out of the blue we find somebody? It's a third party inspector acceptable to the county. Okay. The developer is going to have to identify that inspector and pay for that inspector. Okay. So in terms of approving the agreement, I think there's two ways we can go about this. We could uh, approve it this evening with the amendments that Garrett mentioned, and then we could all have a last look at it just to make sure nobody has any issues. That's one route. We could make the, the adjustments to the agreement, circulate it, and then potentially approve it, and then ratify that approval at the next meeting. Is there a preference? I prefer the second. Okay. Just because. So we're approving the final agreement. Ratifying I think that the we can. Final agreement. Yeah, we can circulate okay. it and then just put it on the consent for ratification. But that allows um, each of you to think about things that maybe haven't come up in the discussion, and we just put it in without having to bring it back at a meeting to discuss again. Agreed. I mean, so. Agreed. Okay. So um, I do think it would be helpful if maybe this evening what we're doing is approving uh, Garrett to work with the, the developer here to get this agreement into, into the correct form. And then we'll get it. As soon as everybody agrees it's in the right form and we're OK with it, I'll sign it. And, and we'll ratify it at our next meeting. So you're not waiting two weeks for it. Thank you. It's fine. Does that work? Yeah. Okay. So is there a motion on that? Robert? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. I'll make a motion that we, I'm trying to think, I'm not sure it's a motion for an approval yet. <laughs> Maybe direct? Yeah. I'll make a motion that we direct the applicant 
to work with the county attorney with respect to an at-risk development for property located at 4985 West Old Highway Road. Lee's Marketplace, application number 22.059. Um, on the refinement of an agreement pertaining to that development and proceeding at risk um, with the items that we've discussed this evening. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. We do appreciate your willingness to come and and be here, and we're looking forward to to Lee's Marketplace opening very soon. And hang in there. Thank you. Yeah, hang yes, in there. Thank, thank, thank you for hanging in there. there. And please keep us informed of any any future delays so we, we can will. do what we can to help move things and along. And may I say, we need to get the three water companies together and talk about water yeah, somehow or another. So, I mean, I'd be glad to work with you. Next week, not this week. Is Robert there? Take a break. Yes, I'll follow up with Commissioner Anderson on the Public Service District. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. We'll move to item number five. Josh. Oh, Jeremy. Sorry. Did you guys get us all mixed up? Good evening, Mr. Chair and members of the commission. Item uh, number nine on tonight's agenda is for application number 23.029. This is Wasatch Peaks Ranch LLC requesting site plan approval for the North Village Residential Project, uh, which is a collection of parcels intended for multifamily residential dwellings. The North Village Residential Site Plan consists of 12 mountain villas, 12 townhome units, and 15 condo units. It is a part of a master plan community within an RSD special district zone identified by the township and range numbers contained in your staff report and is located at 4213 North Morgan Valley Drive in Peterson. The total area here is 1.46 acres. Uh, staff has reviewed this project, finds that it meets all minimum code requirements for a site plan. There are no fire or engineer comments for this application. Uh, the Planning Commission heard this item in their regularly scheduled meeting on August 10. It was a unanimous vote to recommend approval to this body, uh, with members Bass and Stevens absent. I, along with Josh, can answer any questions you may have, and the applicant is in the audience tonight. Thank you. So this is a request for a site plan approval, and then will they come back? So you've got 12 mountain villas, 12 townhome units, and 15 condo units. So will they come back with the, the subdivision plat and condominium plat applications? For the mountain villas, yes. And they have gone through small subdivision, a small subdivision process for all three of these entities, but tonight is the site plan for the entire area. The small subdivisions only included those units that they wanted to either turn into individual <coughs> units to sell. Uh, the remaining units, if they want to be able to sell those to other individuals, they'll have to come back and either go through a plan amendment process or a large subdivision to add in those additional units in order to start selling them individually. So if I'm looking here at the site plan, can you guys, well, up there, tell me what which ones are the subject of a site small subdivision approval? So the small subdivisions came to you in August, I believe. Well, if they were small subdivision, they wouldn't have come to us, right? Oh, that's yeah, right, that's right. Right. So the small subdivisions received approval from the Planning Commission um, first meeting in August. 
The su small subdivision is 10 lots or less, and these are 12, right, each group? Well, they didn't want to sell all of them. Josh, you want me to point it out? Gotcha. Yeah, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you can point it out. So for this specific site plan application, we're talking about this condo building, which is five units, and then these 12 townhomes and these 12 mountain villas. What's, what's part of the, we have a small subdivision for each of these. Small subdivision number one is for condo building here. Small subdivision number two is for these six units. I'm sorry, eight units from one to four. And then for mountain villas, one to four here. These two, or for these two, these four units and then these four units will be part of a future application if we decide to sell those in the future. It's the intent. And then the upper condos actually got, this was shown as kind of reference only, kind of stripped out of this application. And the latest staff reported reference is five condo units, which would be in just this building here. Okay, but so you, you've created that lot for a building of that size. But if you're going to create them as condominiums, you're going to have to go through the condominium plat approval process. Okay. As, as long as we're, we're all talking the same language. Okay. All right. And then the small subdivision, so those, I'll call them the town homes, those are essentially a zero lot line? Lots? Okay. Okay, questions for the applicant. I had just one. Where is this in relationship to that current, uh, I think it's the golf cart barn that's there. Is that on this lower corner? Uh, it is a, it's on the lower left-hand corner. It sits right here, just off the page. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm just trying to get my bearings on it. So. And that is only 1.46 acres, that whole thing? Brian? Well, they're only talking the, the middle section of that U and that. Yeah, the outside the units in that U uh, were part of a, pr a prior plat, or plat amendment, I guess. Um, so that's been approved, and those are kind of single-family home sites. And so it's just the inner part of the horseshoe, and then the townhomes that are flanking the you know, upper page of that, that one copy. It's a little misleading with the landscape plan. Sorry about that. Okay. That makes sense. Well, and I, I can certainly understand the virtues of a small lot subdivision process, but to the extent that there's time, I would certainly suggest that these come in as applications for subdivision it's, it, for the whole phase. It's kind of interesting yeah. to do it this way. Yeah, it's confusing. <laughs> Okay, if there are no further questions, we'll look for a motion on item number five. Mr. Are Chair, you, go okay. ahead. Okay, Mr. Chair, I move to approve. Move that we approve the Wasatch Peaks Ranch North Village Residential Site Plan Application 23.029, allowing for collection of parcels intended for multifamily residential dwellings located at 4213 North Morgan Valley Drive in Peterson based on the findings and with conditions listed in the staff report dated September 5th, 2023. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Okay, okay. item number Mike, six. Mike, before you go on. Yes. I just have a question for you guys. Being a former male person, your addresses are all Mount Morgan Valley Drive. Are they going to change after you get this whole project done? Yeah, Pete's Platt uh, has the addresses. Funnel Platt has the addresses. So I'm not definitely a new address. Okay. So we don't have anything yet, then, Josh. So the way we've been handling it is we're using the address to their gate house. Okay. Uh, that's if I remember correctly. That's where it's addressed. And so all the mail would come there if there was mail at this time for any residents. 
if they put in a lot box. So the net, what we're going to have at our member services area outside the gate is a mail delivery. So you will not have to enter into the community for mail delivery. Uh, so you will know, just be in kind of a, a bulk area. Yeah, and, okay. Uh, I know what it is. Yeah, okay. I just wondering what, because you've got a couple of different addresses all the time. So that's just for the applications, but again, once we submit the final class, they, the addresses are assigned to each uh, lot and unit. And then those addresses are used for a building permit application. For okay. All right. That's all I have, Mike. You guys have offered to let me come up and see that again, and I've been really busy, but well, maybe this fall we can schedule a time. I'd love to see what your progress is up there. Great. Okay, Jeremy, item number six. Uh, action item number six is for application number 23.016. Uh, this is Expert Enterprises LLC requesting site plan approval for three storage unit buildings at the Shortfield Landings Project, uh, which is in addition to, to the storage units that are already present in the northwest corner of the lot on the parcel and serial number containing your staff report and is located at 4032 West 5800 North. The acreage for this uh, site is 1.34 acres. The general plan land use designation for this area is business park. The zoning district here is commercial buffer. The elevations are uh, the applicant has worked with our office to make sure the elevations are designed to commercial standards. And this is part of Shorefield Landings Phase 2. Uh, phase 1 and Phase 2 both received final plot approval in July from this body. Uh, from the Planning Commission for this item, there is a stipulation added that they, uh, the materials used for their project be uh, follow those outlined in our code in Section 8-5C-7-3. Uh, which is the commercial design standard section. Staff has recommended or re reviewed this project and finds that it meets all of our minimum code requirements. There are no fire or engineer comments for this item. This was heard in the uh, planning commission meeting on August 10th as well, with a unanimous vote to uh, recommend approval to the county commission. Members Bass and Stevens absent from that meeting. I, along with Josh, can answer any questions you may have, and the applicant is not in the audience tonight. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay, questions for Jeremy. Yeah. So, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I was just going to say it's interesting. We've had uh, many of these in the past, but we haven't had, as long as they put the specific materials as outlined in code, my first thought is, well, have they not? I mean, I, I would assume that they know that and that they're they're planning on it. But so let me address that. So there are certain materials that are just outright approved. You can use those materials without planning commission approval. And then there's a list of materials that specifically require planning commission to approve those materials because when the code was adopted, I don't think they saw those additional materials as good materials. The applicant has agreed, or the applicant's representative in the planning commission meeting, agreed to use only the materials that do not require planning commission approval. So there's only a, a few listed materials there. They're going to have to use one of those materials for the for these structures. If, if they want to use something else, they got to go back and get planning commission approval. Why haven't we changed that in the law in the code? I don't know. Because, I mean, there's newer, since that code was put in, there's newer building materials that are might be better. Well, I'm not allowed to recommend changes. I have to be directed. <laughs> I'm just... I have only so much time. The process, the the process just seems... <laughs> um, and I try to enforce the code as it's currently written. Right. I know. I'm just... Thanks for the clarification. <laughs> So I have two questions. The areas between the buildings, I can't, it says underground something. I can't read it on the version that 
Um, I would imagine it's underground uh, water retention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're ponds. They're the mm -hmm. stormwater ponds. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then, are the the dashed lines within the buildings supposed to be indicating units? Uh, yeah, those are the individual storage units that will be rentable. So when we went through the condominium plat process, each of these whole buildings are just going to be one unit owned by one owner, which is the owner of the entire property. Um, and he identified this this area as um, convertible space. Vacuum, convertible space. So within one year it'll convert. I believe it's within a year or whatnot. No, there's not a time frame on it. Oh, they have to come back then. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, that's good. Enough. So if he, I mean, he a convertible space is treated as a unit for purposes of the Condominium Act, so he can just do these buildings, but he can't separately convey any of the spaces. No, those are He can demise space. them and lease them, but... Yeah, they're just going to be leased storage space and in, an indoor storage facility. Okay. He, there was no comment by the fire? The fire has been heavily invested in this site, and they've been working with the applicants directly. Um, I know that there's been some fire issues that they've been dealing with, but the last I heard, they had worked through those. Um, during construction, a lot of those fire comments, if there are additional comments, will be hashed out during construction. And this, it looks like a snow removal nightmare to me. Yeah, it, it, it does. But so where are they going to store right? the snow? Um, That's yeah. all private, though. We're not going to have to do it. It's a I realize that. Yeah. However, so it's where are they going to put somewhere. it? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> On the neighbors. In the open field to the west or south. Southwest. Our code prohibits them from putting it on the county road. Yeah. Yeah. So they're basically going to be hauling it off. Yeah. Or pushing it behind the buildings, I guess. Why wouldn't they push but it? Where they're going to put it? There's no space behind well, the buildings. Just push it right off. They're de starting to develop this area too, right here. Yeah. yeah. I looked at that today. I wonder how are they going to do it. We have asked the applicant to um, obtain a cross access easement with his neighbor to help with circulation problems. Which neighbor? The neighbor to the, to the west. west. To the west. And they've he, you've got something written from the neighbor that he's agreeable to that. I've or? talked to the neighbor. He's come in asking what it was about. I would imagine players work that out. I will require that letter. Probably be as well. Is that going to be possible, or are they going to want to gate these off to walk it? I mean, uh, if a lot of times with off, storage, they do that. That's true. If he decides to gate it off, then there's got to be some circulation pattern there. And I've talked to the engineer, um, Reeves and Associates, and so they're going to be talking to Blair about either that access easement where that is in the process or widening that, that uh, area behind each building to the west. Because right now that they're only 10 or 11 feet which means the setbacks but if it was a one way around those buildings it would need to be a minimum of 12 feet. questions what is he planning in that upper left hand corner is that another uh, is that just an existing storage the building. northwest corner is an existing structure okay. oh that's right I remember that our office issued a I don't like conditional it. use permit a what our office issued a conditional use I guess permit that can be used just, just like the other storage units buildings that are proposed yeah. tonight is that? You couldn't have given another pinch or anything on there. Is there a snow storage area requirement in the code?
The application says that snow storage has been identified. I'm trying to see it, and when I zoom it's in, it's pretty I'm, blurry. I'm not seeing it. When you blow it up, you can't. Well, I don't know how it could be identified. There's only buildings on the lot. Yeah, unless it's the area that's kind of got that double dot hatching area. But that doesn't seem to make sense. Because that actually goes into it's the infiltration building. galleries. Do we know what the rest of the facilities there do with their snow? They they just barely got them. They haven't gone through a winter. They built through this last winter. Yeah. All these? Oh, I, th I thought you meant these that he just no, sold. To the north. The, all north. the ones existing in, on off of 5800 North. Yeah, the, uh, well, there's been lots of empty lots, empty space there that people have been, there was mounds of snow everywhere down there last year. But I... I don't know. I I don't see even where they've got these professional spaces. You, you can't push it out that end. They're landscaping that right now. So they've got to take all that snow and push it somewhere and the only the, the only place it can go is out into the street. <laughs> There's nowhere to put it. Can we recommend postponing this until we get some of these things figured out? Well, I think he should be here so we can explain it. Yeah. That's Is that a motion you're making? Yes. Second. <laughs> okay, we have a motion and a second to postpone item number six. Can I, I have a question? Request for to the clarification, motion. right? Yes. <laughs> To, to the next meeting, or how long are we posting? To the next meeting. Just so, okay. so he could be and, here. And what comments are we talking about? Because it sounds like the we have multiple. Removal. But, I th yeah, I've heard one, snow removal. Okay, snow removal is a big one. Maneuverability around this, this whatever it is, the project. Uh, how are they going to do that? Um, where, where are they going to put the snow? That's basically the two things. And as... If they've met with the fire department, we haven't seen a letter from him saying it's okay, everything's okay. I would like to see that. I know they've met with the fire department. Okay. I just want to make sure we're specific, and I want to make sure we're consistent. Right. If we were worried about snow lat now, we should have been worried about snow every time we've addressed this. Yeah, so we have. Or he can send you just correspondence indicating that he's reviewed it and doesn't have any comments on it. But I think in terms of the snow storage, I, I, that's why if you can look to see if there's a specific requirement that we need to look at to make sure that it's satisfied, that will help with the consistency issue. And in terms of the access to and from, I mean, there are lots of storage unit communities that don't have a second means of ingress and egress out. So if we're going to uh, impose a particular circulation requirement here, I think that needs to be according to a standard as well. Whatever okay. it is. I, I mean... I so you're saying most of them, Robert, don't go around the end? They okay. have dead ends like that? I think, yeah, I think the one right there in that vicinity, if you, you go in On and that you go corner, down to the one, I don't think you can come around. I mean, I, mm. I think you can. I think I, you can because I did. I'm just going by memory of loading into one of the end units, and I thought that like it was dirt on that far side. It looks like you can on these. There is some space on the ends here. Well, there's space, but it's not paved. Right oh, right there? There's a little paved space, but then it's dirt. Yeah. Or okay. Well, so maybe there is enough space around there. Oh, yeah. So I you, can't you're see thinking maybe they could come around like the center one or something right. like that. Come around this way. I can't see the measurements on these, so it's yeah. hard. Because if he shortened up the center building, then both lanes could come around that center. If there's a requirement, I don't have any issue imposing it. I just want to make sure we understand the requirement before we put 
No, I agree. I, I don't want to just postpone it just to postpone it, but I'm just, yeah, yeah, I would like to uh, know that there's not a safety issue there. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I just want to make sure when we come back we understand what the parameters are so that we can impose the requirements that we're legally okay. allowed to impose. And I'm just wanting for we want to have a few things more clarified so that we know what we're voting on. Because right now we're voting on something we could just say, okay, well, everybody vote. <laughs> yes, that yes, and we don't have any, you know, we're going to cause a problem in the future. It okay, does look so really tight. So we have a motion and a second to postpone item number six until our next meeting. For clarification. Yep, for the clarifications previously listed. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. Is there any way, Josh, we can get more clear um, so we can read these? Yeah, so in each of your staff reports, uh, um, when you get down to the, uh, the attachments, Jeremy's been including a link that you can follow that Click. takes you to the where it says click here for full size PDF oh, okay. document. And, and every time I did it, it would not work. We've, um, we've tried to get higher resolution images in your staff reports, and it just hasn't worked. It still doesn't so work. We thought that link would work. I'm not sure. Yeah, it works great for works, me. Works for me. I couldn't get it to work. But there's no measurements on it. Um, it's the actual. Oh, here we are. Okay. Full there we go, 33.44, okay. Between well, one of them is, but one of them's 24 and one's 33. Yeah. We did that I see, on this actual one. PDF that came in from the Denver, so. Where is that link? Am I missing it? Right there, that blue go, go line. Here, go to the drawing itself. Oh, it's on the drawing. And yeah, there's a link for it there. That's nice. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Click here for full size. <coughs> okay. All right, we are on item number seven. This is the item that was not originally in our packet. But we'll uh, so action item number seven is for application number 23.006. This is Morgan Valley Partners LLC requesting approval of a proposed concept plan of 28 single family lots and one additional larger parcel consisting of approximately 342.48 acres in the area known as the Round Valley Subdivision which is generally located at the addresses in your staff report 1875, 1925, and 1975 East Round Valley Road in unincorporated Morgan County. Essentially, it's at the north end of the terminus of Round Valley Road. The applicant is uh, Tom Henry Allard of the project, or the current zoning is a master, is, is MPDR, Master Plan Development um, Area. The general plan designation is Master Plan Community. Uh, Staff has uh, reviewed this project and finds that it meets all minimum code requirements. This was originally part of what was previously known as the Revala Development Agreement, which was amended and is, uh, which requirements are uh, subject to the item tonight. Uh, there is one uh, final review prior to, or there will be one final review prior to recordation of the Mylar. Uh, the Planning Commission met on the regularly scheduled meeting on August 10 with a unanimous vote to recommend approval with members Bass and Stevens' absence. And I, along with Josh, can answer any questions you may have. And the applicant is in the audience tonight. Thank you, Mr. Chair. If I may add, this is a concept plan approval. Uh, they originally had concept plan approval, um, I don't know if it was two years ago, um, maybe three. But uh, when they came to apply for their preliminary, 
preliminary plat back in uh, January, they had exceeded the um, the allowed time for a concept plan approval to last, which is why I required them to go through the concept plan process again. Um, so what you have before you is a concept plan. So this is the back nine, basically. Yeah. Well, the back nine, we're taking it out. Okay. Questions for Josh? Oh. Wait a minute. Sorry, not Josh Jeremy. Are we on Round Valley Subdivision Concept Plan? We are. Uh -huh. This is the one that's not in your packet. It, he they, emailed, he emailed it to us right while we were talking. Separately. Oh. So what I have, the information we have is... This is there's also a rezone request? No, that's, it. that's afterward. No. This is number seven. It's like oh, I guess I have completely missed it then. Well, I, we all did. It yeah, wasn't. It there. wasn't in the packet. It wasn't in the packet. Okay. It's one that just came in and just before five o'clock. We haven't had time to look at it. Lane, you gotta love that bike trail right along the river. The what? Bike trail. You mean they put it in? I can't see. I haven't seen it. I've already, I've already asked them why it's not there. But you know, that's okay. I lost last year, and I'll lose this year. <laughs> well, I'm sure those people are paying a lot for those lots. So. I'd hate to be rusting a wiener down by the river and have bikes going by. Uh, I wouldn't mind the smells. <laughs> <laughs> it's more of a walking trail than it would be a bike trail. Okay, so where this was not included in our packet, um, we could treat this a couple of ways. We can ask any questions we have the applicant here. We can ask questions of the applicant. We could hold until the next meeting. We can do both. Do you have questions you'd like to ask now? Would you like a little more time to review this? I would like more time to review it, but I do have a couple of questions because I listened to it on our planning commission that we had, or that was had last, not last week, maybe it was last week. Yeah. I have a question, and this is more for the applicant. You've had, you came in over a year ago to have it with the concept plan. And in that concept plan, you were discussing 34 residential lots at that time. And we extended your agreement to go until June of this year. Now you've come in to us two, three, four months later after that was done and you're doing a reconcept plan. However, um, the first agreement was for 34. I'm not saying I want 34. I don't want 29. I want a trail instead. Uh, and I want to keep the golf course. Um, my question is, is your agreement expired? So since that agreement expired, how can we go forward with a concept plan again? So their when application was submitted prior to expiration. They submitted back in January for this concept plan. Okay. So the concept plan was submitted prior to expiration. Staff has been working with the developer, the applicant, as well as the applicant for ranches at Round Valley to get emergency access uh, northward and to get um, the two parties to work together for that emergency access. So the whole reason it took as long as it has is to get those two parties to get the emergency access and to record a maintenance agreement. So their application predates the expiration. 
And Josh, just to elaborate too, so we had two other bumps in the road. We ended up going through a text amendment application to adjust uh, the road cross section. Worked with staff on that as well. That took almost three months total um, for that time. And we also had to work with uh, Morgan, uh, sorry, Weaver Morgan Health to make sure that every well and septic fit perfectly. There was no overlapping. So this process has taken just quite a bit longer than we had anticipated. But again, application was submitted in January. Okay. So my qu another question I have then, good explanation for that one. The other explanation is, is why do you want to, I mean, I know that homes and residences are more profitable than a golf course, but the golf course has been here for hundreds of years. It's been here at least 50 years because that's how long I've been here almost. Um, and at that time it was nine holes. But what I'm asking is, is when we're trying to bring in economic development and trying to do something to benefit the community and then we just wipe out half of our world famous golf course, why are you doing it? Because I mean that's what everybody used to say, oh Round Valley is the best golf course in the world. You ought to go to Round Valley. This was back when I was working down in Centerville. Round Valley was the name of what we, were, we had up here. Why do we want to ruin it? So I can't speak directly for all of the owners, but I can speak for the development itself. Um, so the original development applied for actually a much more dense project that was approved. Um, right. And it was, you know, I think dozens more units. Oh, it was 513 um, units. Yeah, exactly. And so I think um, this was trying to be in keeping with kind of the rural nature of the subdivision. Um, and the area, and also still keep the amenity of the golf course, the front nine of that, intact. Um, so, so it's kind of a hybrid approach, right, of the property was bought and purchased for a development reason, um, but then also keeping that golf course intact. Commissioner Facker, I can answer your question. We don't own it. You like, you like golf? We, we don't own it. You know, we're, we're off for property rights, and we want to allow the people to develop the right. property. We we need to buy it from them if we want to keep it. And yeah, that's where I said something wrong. Um, <laughs> um, okay, I agree. I'm just, so you're, where exactly, the original nine holes, where is it in relation to that map? Original nine holes. So the well, front, you can, you the can front see the nine round is here, there. and the back nine is here. Okay. So it, you can kind of see it in this plan. I believe it's overlaid if you look in the complete packet. Well, and if you can see that road that goes around that existing house, that's the, basically the, the cart path. So the it's going to it's going to follow the existing yeah that existing so cart path. Original, so. it's following the original. I mean, so you, so the. The field house is right there, almost where the cursor's at. Yeah, that is. Okay, all right. And so... I'm not disagreeing with you, though. I just, Making it nine holes, it's going to take away a lot of yeah. people coming up here. I'm just so. wondering, uh, and just these are just questions I'm asking because I, I heard some of the comments from the people. And that is, is why not develop on the other side of the road, which is your property also, up on the hillside instead of down into where the golf course is? I think my understanding of the development itself is to kind of do it in phases. So we've left an additional parcel to potentially develop in the future. But I think for now, this is the, the piece that best serves the community and the development, the owners of the site, is kind of parceling this off and keeping nine holes as is and having nine be redeveloped for that small subdivision okay and where you've got those residences there right on the river um you're going to be putting septic tanks and you have not had any morgan weaver or weaver morgan health department come up and do any perk tests or anything they have every everyone has been there. And so on, they, on every single lot they've done tests have it have mm -hmm. they? we have approval from Wow, I'm surprised we have septic tanks and field field drains that close to the river. That's all. I guess I'll have to call Morgan Weaver Health or Weaver Morgan Health. That's why it took her so long. I know the feelings there. You can put a septic tank above the ground. Oh, yeah, you can. Still goes into the river. 
clean. I Fire know. Law. Filtered. <laughs> so the drinkable. <laughs> the staff report indicates that this is consistent with the general plan and the zoning code. Is that based on the development agreement or just independent of it? No, based on the development agreement. It was approved by the by the county commissioner of the county council at the time. I'm not sure when that change occurred, but uh, this is consistent with the development agreement. There's nothing we can do. Yeah, I don't know. I, I guess I, I want to, to a degree, make it public that we would love to keep the course, of course. Um, and we're actively trying to pursue that that avenue if we can. So, I don't know what else we can do. Nothing we can do. If they've met all the code, we can't do it. We can't stop it. As Steve Wilson said in the, in the Planning Commission meeting, he says, I don't want to see it go away, but it's not my property. That he, they have their rights. That's all I. I don't agree with it, but I don't agree with it at all. Okay. Any other questions for the applicant? Where do you want to go with this one? Like I said, we got two options here. We did get it, but at the very beginning of this meeting, so we haven't had a lot of time to review. Can I? I just want to ask, what, what is that stub road? going to do the Uber stubs right to the river is that just like a river access yep yeah you're never done <laughs> yep yeah so that's the road that um, the maintenance agreement pertains to mostly that leads to the bridge for emergency access over the river oh okay. that's the current road that goes across oh to Reese's okay. Reese's all right Got it. That emergency access actually goes all the way up. Uh, it doesn't just stop at the bridge and goes all the way up. Yeah. The, the freeway. When you say it, the easement? Uh, there's actually... Um, well, the physical the, access, right? The physical the access, but there's a dirt road there that's been inspected by the county engineer, and uh, the fire department was there as well. Uh, the county engineer inspected the bridge as well and felt that it was good enough that it could handle the, the emergency vehicles traveling over, which is why we went that route for the emergency access. But what I'm asking is what rights do we have for that access? There is a dedicated easement right now for both developers to access that, and there's a maintenance agreement that's been in, that's been put in place that puts the uh, burden on both the ranches around Valley Development and this development to maintain it throughout the year. You'll see that maintenance agreement come before you in the preliminary class phase. It's not exactly necessary in the concept plan phase. Okay. Dave, our fire marshal has a comment. I've got a question on that. It appears to me, if you look at that, those last few lots right there completely surround that emergency access going across the bridge. Is that right? Completely surround. Yes. So, so where are the branches from Round Valley get into the emergency access? Branches from Round Valley will also have access off of this main road. So that will be through this subdivision. And these are all going to become public roads, not private roads? I believe this is, say it's a private road. They're going to be public roads. So, yeah. Because they went through the process to get a new standard, that rural street standard. Yeah. Um, that's what's going to be constructed in this subdivision. So they will be public. Okay. okay. The other question that was brought up in that meeting was, uh, and I have not gotten an answer from it, the road in particular getting to Round Valley is pretty narrow still. What do we have to, what do we plan for doing for that? Because that's pretty dangerous going through there. If you're bringing in 30 homes, 29 homes, that's uh, 29 times, you know, that's quite a few people going through there possibly during the day. We've got that street along that past Tonks and everywhere else to the bridge that they put in. I'm just curious, what are we going to do there? So because now we've got another problem. Brett Heiner clarified to staff that there was actually worked on that road only three years ago. 
to the sum of about two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for making a safe from improving a little bit. New asphalt. Yeah, we were asphalt. Yeah, just eat right asphalt, but what I'm saying is width. Well there's only certain exactions that we can require and most of the exact most of what you would be requiring would be right. for somebody that doesn't own the property to widen the property further away. Um, you can either require it through a pioneering agreement or a payback agreement um, but that implies that you're going to require this developer no, to I'm put not. in all the improvements all along that road, obtain the right of way and everything else which I, I think that's too much of an exaction. I think you'll have trouble defending that. Right. Court. I'm not worried about them putting it in. What I'm saying is what are we going to be doing as a county for safety of that road? That's what I'm asking. I'm asking, what are we going to do about the safety of that road? What's the, the right of way? That's, that's a different discussion, I think. Yeah, I know, but it's still part of the decision on this development. We have you can't turn road. it down because we of have, what we got to do. We have multiple roads we need to work on. Yeah, we've got a lot of roads that are in that situation. The previous developer, previous owner of this property, paid for the bridge that, that's located right. there over I know that. In order to provide a secondary access. There's a lane in each direction, isn't there? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, there's a lane in each direction. I, one thing I will note, looking at this plot map, I don't see good snow storage. Um, and given that you've got two cul-de-sacs that are fairly long, there's going to need to be some type of snow storage delineated there, I think. Yeah, as far as the concept plan goes, um, it meets minimum requirements. When the preliminary plat comes in, the preliminary plat will have to show exact right-of-way widths designed to that rural street standard, which will have that snow storage built into it. Perfect. Dave's got his hand up again. Dave? I have one other question. What are we doing for fire protection for these 29 lots? That's a great question. Uh, it's every single lot is going to have um, sprinklers inside the building meeting the code. So there'll be sprinkler time. Mm -hmm. Are those square footage? It will all be just to meet code, right? So whatever is necessary to meet code. Um, and I believe that means that each each individual house will have to have um, sprinklers. Because they're definitely in the wildland urban interface and there's no hydrants anywhere. Yeah, actually out there. Sorry, outside the wildland urban interface, right? But they'll have to have at least sprinklers in, in all these, <coughs> these homes to meet that. Regardless of square footage. And I'm going back to that access point that you access. I didn't think that when we were up there talking and calling them. The others that we were going to have to drive through all of these houses to get out from in the ranches for round out. I thought it was a more direct road going down there uh, than what they're showing on this. Could be wrong. I don't have access to their development, their development plan. We'd obviously be happy to take a look and see if there's opportunity for more direct access, but I think from what we had so far, we were meeting code. Can a pump and a well provide enough pressure for a fire expression? Is, can the what? It's a lot of water. Can a well for a one pump fire suppression yeah. system? Yeah. yeah. If they were all on fire at the same time, maybe it would be hard. They're in a 13-day water system, sprinkler system. Council be required to have their own tank to run that 13 D. It's a more uh, modified sprinkler system than the 13 R. And depending on the square footage and things that you have in on the homes, that would be depending on how big of a tank they're going to have to put in to run that sprinkler system. Fire department, we definitely prefer a water system in the whole system. It's got hydrants that we can help to. And 
do our job properly that way with some water from hydrants. That's what we would prefer. So when we have a, and I just know this happens from others because I don't have it. Um, in a sprinkler type fire protection, a lot of people turn those off. Then what happens when the, I mean, their house is going to burn down. Why would the they fire, turn them off? Huh? Why would know. they turn them off? I don't know. I just heard that some people do that. They don't like them, Matt. They don't like the sprinkler system to begin with. They are going to put them in, as she said. Nothing we can do if they decide to turn off once it's in. Really? So they don't have, like my apartments, they don't have to have them inspected yearly? In a, in a dwelling, no. Really? Apartments are See, you can turn them off. Single family dwelling. <laughs> my apartments <laughs> probably require. Yeah, inspection. every year I have to have them come and make sure that. My smoke alarm's gone off about four times over the years, so my house would have been flooded four times. <laughs> I got to quit cooking bacon. <laughs> He's got a burn, burn burning bacon. I think this is interesting because we we have subdivisions of this size and, and much larger that come through fairly frequently. Um, but I think this is the first subdivision I've seen in my 10 years of planning commission and, and county council of this size that was not connected to a water system, to Dave's point. Um, generally speaking, we see small subdivisions, 10 lots or less, that are not, um, because they're typically rural, but we rarely see a large concentration, 20, 30 homes, at that one, are at one, time. at one time, that are not connected to a water system. So this is a, an interesting... Um, so is Round Valley on a well? The, the golf course? Uh -huh. yeah. Well, I assume so. I, I assume every... There's nothing out that road course. then, huh? No. Huh? And that was also part of the delay. Um, sorry to interrupt. No, no, you're was, fine. That was part of the delay, too, is us trying to figure that out with staff of, can we put in this whole system? How far away is it? How viable is it? And at this point, it just is not viable. It's not possible. Let's see that. So that was part of this exercise. I think if you're going to develop in the future, as you pointed out, further up, it would be well worth your time to put in a system right now to take care of it. Does our code allow this with all these wells? I guess it, I guess it does, versus requiring a water system. I would go back to the development agreement that was approved. Did the development agreement require a water system to be put in to serve all these, or do we know that? I think that's something we could review because yeah, I'm to get somewhat familiar with that area of our code with wells and water systems and <laughs> might be able to just kind of go through the development agreement to see what we can and can't enforce because that is why the subdivisions are smaller is because the code allows for it under a certain provision anything above a certain amount or where a water system's available or proposed, it triggers other requirements. And so... Again, available or proposed. But, but it doesn't allow for a subdivision to be on wells over a certain number, and so I think we would have to look at that development agreement. I'm not, I'm not sure it doesn't allow them. We well, so it allows them where there's eight or less to be on wells. Otherwise, they have to not be on wells. However, if there's eight or less and there's a water system that's available or proposed, it still kicks them into B2 instead of B1 of that provision. So if, if they have some grandfathering under the development agreement, I think that that would be the issue is we now have a code that they're not going to comply with, but their grandfather did. So I, I would love to see the development agreement included in the packet um, for, for our 
next discussion on this at least. Um, and I think we ought to review that and determine is this part of the development agreement or not. That's my thought. I'd like to postpone it, review those items, and then visit it on our next meeting. So with that, I'll make a motion that we postpone the Morgan Valley Partners LLC request for approval of a proposed concept plan for 28 single-family lots to our next meeting with their application materials to be included in the packet together with the existing development agreement and all amendments. I'll second it. Okay, a motion a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, item number eight, Jeremy. Action item number eight is for application number, um, actually I don't know the application number. Um, this is for a request to amend one lot within the Heather Meadows subdivision to divide in half and create one additional lot. The property is located within the Heather Meadows subdivision and is identified by the Parcel number and serial number contained in your meeting packet and is located at 4475 North Heather Meadow Drives in Peterson. The applicant uh, and owner is, is uh, Phil and Jennifer Larson. Project location I mentioned before on North Heather Meadows Drive. The current zoning is R120. The general plan designation for this area is, is the village low density. Uh, designation and the acreage here is 1.75 acres. Uh, staff has reviewed this project and finds that it meets all minimum code requirements for a plat amendment. There are no fire or engineer comments. Uh, the Planning Commission met on the same meeting August 10. A unanimous approval for this item, uh, rather recommendation to approve to this body. With members Bass and Stevens absent, I, along with Josh, can answer any questions you may you may have, and the applicant is in the audience tonight. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, we're on page 83 in the pack. Well, the the current plan is on page 83. Right up. Thanks. document on this. Okay. So was the planning commission, was that a public hearing? No, okay. no, this is an administrative budget. Sorry, it was not a public hearing. So this this uh, so on this we're trying to um, they're trying to just divide it because it's allowable under the current zoning, correct? That's a plot amendment. And they're dividing lot four. And they're making their own their own little subdivision within this subdivision. Basically making. Uh, lot 4A and 4B. So that means they are hooking up to the the water company there. Uh, they've signed an agreement with PPA. They'll be on septic for this subdivision. And as far as the plot amendment goes, there will be one final review from the county surveyor, the county engineer, county recorder, and staff just to review that plot one more time before their degradation. And this fits within the current zoning? Yeah, it's within yes. the current zoning. It's a quarter acre or something. Half acre. 120 is half acre, right? Oh, sorry. Half acre. Yeah. Um, so does that mean every, every if they're zoned 1-20, anybody, that means they can come in and split their lots, is that correct? To make it to where they have two or three within that to, to fulfill that need? Any minimum code standards, yes. 
Well, they'd have to have frontage to. Right. There, to there, okay. there, are, there is the required amount of frontage for both of these walls. Okay. But so what is that required that frontage? Be, that's what you mean by saying minimum code standards. Got to make sure you fit all the standards right. Okay. So so the amount of frontage on each one of those is doesn't say. It's going to be over 200, right? Is it over? It can't be over 200, really. Oh, I don't know. No, the front is just much less for a hundred. For half a kilo. Yeah, I'd have to look. Are they putting in a road between the two homes? No, it's a utility no. easement. Oh, okay. Right. All right. PUE. So they've got 70.73 feet on 1-L, and they have, doesn't say on the other one. They've got plenty of frontage because you got yeah. the whole, you got a corner lot there. Yeah. I'm fine with it. And the cul-de-sac is similar in frontage to the lot right next to it. Are they going to restrict access on the back side of those lots? Or allow access anywhere? I don't know the answer to that. A question for the applicant, perhaps? Well, they adjoin existing lots, right? Right. On the back side. Yeah, I just... You mean uh, other allowing than them to PUE have approaches right? wherever they want, all the way around the lot to roads, kind of a thing? Mm -hmm. so, this is the question. I wouldn't think so. So the reason I, I wanted to, I just looked at the LEDMA just to see if a public hearing was required, and it looks like they fall within an exception. So that's why I'd asked the question. But looks like we're good to go. Okay. Okay. Any more questions for staff before we hear from the applicant? Okay. The applicant here. Any questions for the applicant? Uh, the only comment that I would make and present to the county council is that we've worked closely with um, planning department and we meet all the minimum requirements and we fall within the Morgan County Land Use Code. Um, to be able to move forward. The purpose and the reason why we're doing this um, is to be able to access water from Peterson Pipeline, which has been a problem since we bought our lot five years ago. Two years ago, um, the county pointed out that there, the code states that if there's a proposed provider within the area that we're, re that we're required to use that provider. And two years ago, we decided to go down that path to do whatever it took to free our lot from Heather Meadows to be able to get connect to PPA. And by splitting our lot and being able to get two memberships from Peterson Pipeline, they were willing to let us access their water. If you have any questions regarding Heather Meadows, where it stands now, we've worked very closely with Garrett as well. And answer any questions as far as Heather Meadows goes. Um, but as far as we can, our engineer, we're working closely with the county engineer, we've turned all the changes over um, for the final plat, and there's nothing that we see as a, as a problem there in the works right now of making all of those changes. So, Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we approve the Larson Subdivision Plat Amendment Application Number 23.032, located at 4475 North Heather Meadows Drive in Peterson, based on the findings listed in the staff report, dated September 5th, 2023. Second. A motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion passes. Thank you. All right. Made it through our action items. We will move to item G, our public hearing. We have one public hearing this evening. Um, Jeremy, are you presenting this one? Okay. 
So we'll have you present it, and then we'll go into public hearing, and then we'll adjourn the public hearing and reconvene the public meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, public hearing item number G1 is for application number 23.038. Uh, the applicant is the Thurston Asset Protection Trust. Uh, the project location is 75 feet south and east of the terminus of Deep Creek Road in Milton. Uh, the current zoning is MU160. Uh, the general plan designation actually has a split on this property between natural resources and rec and ranch residential 10 acre minimum. The request here is to change the future land use map uh, from natural resources and rec uh, to ranch residential 10 and rezone property from MU 160 to RR10, uh, identified by the parcel number and serial number contained in your meeting packet. Uh, staff has reviewed this project and finds that it meets all minimum code requirements for a zoning map amendment uh, from MU 160 to RR10. Uh, there are no fire or engineer comments for this application. There haven't been too many calls or emails to our office, uh, but we did get a, there's a letter on your desk, and I actually hold a letter that's basically modified to have signatures on it. And these signatures are all uh, in part of approving this request for a rezone. Happy to distribute that if you want to see it. Uh, it's about 15 signatures in support. So staff is recommending approval for uh, three particular reasons. One, the, the property is currently non-conforming. It's 75.99 acres in a MU160 zone, 160 lot, 160 uh, acre minimum. Uh, the surrounding zoning is all, it's either A20 or RR10, just, just down the road from, or down the Crick Road. And then staff finds that, that this rezone would help to establish consistency all the way through to the terminus of Deep Creek Road uh, with, with zoning, again, that's in harmony with the surrounding area. This item was heard in the regularly scheduled Planning Commission meeting on August 24. The vote was in favor, three to two. Uh, members, I remember Phillips being absent from that vote. Uh, but I, along with Josh, can answer any questions you may have. And, the applicant is in the audience tonight. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Questions for staff? I have a question for either the staff or the applicants. The road that's going up to those under other non-conforming lots, is that lot going to be, I mean, or is that road going to stay, or are you going to put it in another location, or do you... Are you going to put a gate at the end? Are you talking about the lots that are further than the acres? Uh -huh. They're all 10 acres. So as part of a subdivision, I mean, they're going through a rezoning right now. Right. But uh, if and when they submit a subdivision be approximately eight acres, that's when we would ask that. All the lots that are created at that time would have to have front and on the street. No, and so it would probably less. require an improvement or more, to sorry, the more. structure that's out there right now. To that edge of their property. Okay, that's fine. I was just curious if you were going to put a gate at the front and not let anybody through unless they had a key. Uh, any subdivision that comes forward is going to have to be yeah. Well, it's not a subdivision now. All they're doing is requesting it be rezoned. Okay. So, would they have to upgrade? I sorry, I was talking with Commissioner Wilson for just a second on a question he had, but I'm sorry. Hopefully, I don't ask the same thing you asked, but they're going to have to make the improvements on that road on the frontage of their property. Do we, yeah, is that? The time of the subdivision application did not as part of this. Not disagreeing. Oh. Just just wanted to verify that. Yeah. Because we, I think there'll be a gap. You're a little bit tense tonight. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> I, don't ha I don't have a Snickers <laughs> for you. I'm not as tense. Can so I, I see that, that letter? Yeah. There's just going to be the... I think there's a turnaround, kind of a cul-de-sac area where they can turn around there. And I think between there and this property, it's currently gravel. Does that sound right? Yeah, yeah. it is. Um, if they're going to use that as their access road for their lots, then those, those 
Sure. I guess I would follow along the same statements we've made in previous back tonight and even previous before where I um, there's I've always had a big concern with the roads that are not um, up to par um, that are that are very difficult to drive when there's nowhere to put snow you can't pass each other because it's not wide enough we, we have a lot of issues on that road and that that falls on us as the county but what the applicant has to look at is that road that's adjacent to their property so I guess I guess the thought is I don't know if I want to go down road from their property to say hey here's the upgrades we could we could see happening there versus saying that that would be a, a con question I guess I would have in that little that section so Right. Since the other half would be required as part of development, <clears throat> other communities have required the entire thing be put in and then you use a buyback agreement or a binary agreement right. to make sure that when the property that is benefited develops, the, the original developer gets uh, reimbursed for that cost. So, what is the requirement for a 10 acre lot as far as drainage? 330 feet. Is, I, I thought that was for larger. No, it's 330. That's much larger than that. Yeah, because A20 is 300, I thought. We'll look at that. Okay, that's fine. Um, <laughs> question I had, just in the spirit of what we're trying to do, I guess, down that area is everybody says those are mostly all 10 acre lots how come you didn't request for five acre our fives just curious um, that wasn't the application i know i'm just asking the applicant would you like to hear from the applicant yes i would yes yeah so yeah, yeah, well, right. jeremy and get them up well, here. Well, <laughs> <laughs> i guess just a, a few more comments i want to make real quick first okay go ahead commissioner Fackrell, but I, I just um, want answers. The, the previous rezones we've had, I want to say, I can think back to the previous three at least. Yeah. We're really trying to be consistent with the existing zoning or mm -hmm. what's been approved that, that's near that area. Um, right. Our R5 definitely doesn't, if yeah, you look does. at the existing zoning, it, it doesn't fit. That, that's not saying that anybody has the opportunity to come in and ask for an RFI, right. but it but it definitely doesn't fit this area. Actually, but what neighbors have RFIs? Zone. Yeah, the well, ones right next to it are RFIs. I'm sorry, what I should say are they legal? Not well, they're legal and non-conforming. Okay, so maybe I needed to I throw just, that clause in there. Non-conforming. Non Thank yeah, you. Those are not RFI zoned. It's zoned ME160. They just they just put they're in five acres. Lots. There's a few lots that are five acres. <laughs> I just appreciate the fact that we've tried to be consistent with what's I, existing. I agree. In zone. Yeah. I agree. I'm just saying in Milton, we were saying, okay, R5, I mean, in the lower part of Milton, we were saying R5s. This one here is R, R10, and I'm just curious as to why they didn't request for R5s. Because the ones next to it are R fives. No, they're not. They're Most of them are. They're not I mean, they're not. Most R5. of them are ten. They're five acres. Excuse me. They're five acres. Joshua and and uh, I think yeah. there's. I want to say right there's there. Those two right up there above that A twenty, right? <coughs> right? But right there's zone MU one sixty. Yeah, and it's, yeah. it's so not that just that whole area is MU one sixty, and we got lots that are ten. It's not just two. I think there's another two lots at least as you head down the road. So. Right. Some of these older lots didn't um, work well with with what the existing zoning was, and I don't know what happened or why. But right. there's there's a few lots that are. And smaller. maybe we need to go in and we need to just plain rezone everything to what's there. Just some thoughts. I just see there, that there's we're nothing wrong with having a non-conforming lot, and if the property owner would like to request a zone change, they can do that. Yeah, I'm just I'm just saying that I'm not against it. <laughs> I'm not against it at all. I'm just asking why you didn't just come in and ask for five. Five acre lots, RR5. And 
Jeremy was correct. The frontage of our attendance is the same as 300 feet. Okay. So do we know how many lots they could feasibly fit on there with 330 frontage? The topography um, is difficult there. Yeah. yeah, if you just pretend it's flat, <laughs> <laughs> multiply 70 acres by 0.65 to remove 35% for infrastructure, it'll kind of give you a thing. No, yeah, I'm meaning frontage on the road, not if we put in a new road, but... Well, they technically they could put in a road. They could put in a road to maximize development, but even then, a portion of about 25 to 35 percent is going to be infrastructure related. So you've got the correct road close by to go and the hill on the back side. Yeah. A handful of lots. I think what you're getting at is we're not talking about seven more lots. We're talking about something less than that. Probably five. By the time you actually go through. Structure, but that's not even counting the slope issues. Just a guess. That's fine. Well, and we're not we're not determining that at this step anyway. You know, I'm not. I'm just saying. You know, just curious. Okay. All right. Any other questions later, for Todd, staff before want. we hear from the applicant? All right. Todd, are you the are you the speaker here? <laughs> sure. He's got my. <laughs> we've read it. I've read it. We, we have we've all read, read it. it. Yep. We've all read it. But we've I just, it. I mean, yeah, so we, you don't need to go are, through that. Yeah. We just want an opportunity to get back and, like everyone else, if you can, get something for your children or grandchildren. And we weren't looking to get a lot of lots to keep the rule all set. So. Thank you. That's where I'm going. I appreciate <laughs> it. To where we are. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we open the public hearing. Okay. Second. I have a motion to adjourn the public meeting and convene the public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. We are now in public hearing for this item. Yep. If you have a comment, come on up. Hi. I'm, I'm Darren Stegelmeyer. I'm one of the residents that lives close by there. And... Uh, uh, just a couple comments uh, on, I'm going to say, the zoning and, and Deep Creek as it exists today, uh, or going up Deep Creek. As you can see, there's a lot of challenges with the zoning not being consistent around there. The future use map calls for RR10 or, or 10 acre lots along the, the Deep Creek, as you can see here. And thanks for pulling that up. Good timing with that. Um, one of the mistakes on the future use map that I want to call out is it really, in my opinion, should continue in an arc around this because the, the wording in it says that it should be within, I think, 15 or 1,600 feet of Deep Creek Road. And so the future use lap map should include a, a large portion of the Thurston parcel. Um, and if you pop back over to that zoning map, um, this, this lot right here used to be RR10. Um, it was switched because of some technicalities a couple of years ago, maybe three years ago, around a campground that Doug Kersley had there that he was facilitating for uh, really religious groups and, and nonprofit groups and people like that to come and enjoy. So it was changed on, I'm going to call it, um, a technicality required for him to be able to host those groups there um, on that. So before it was being very consistent around there are 10. I actually think it should be something that's taken up, and I would be willing to champion this to, to, to bring something in front of the planning and development and the county council to get the zoning up and down all of Deep Creek consistent at RR10, as opposed to, as you can see, the A20 that's mixed in and, and throughout this. I think it should be something we just correct, because almost all the lots are either 10 acres or as you can see, some of the non-conforming ones that are um, not conforming to that 10 acres. And you know, I know that the things that used to happen, the PRUDs and things like that, that we don't do um, any longer in the county. But that, that would be my proposal is if somebody wants to coach me even on how to do that from a citizen perspective, um, that's something we can take offline or somebody can talk to me about. But I, I would love to see that taken up. Um, clearly, there's the other 
questions on Deep Creek Road on you know what do we need to do road maintenance and stuff like that. But just from a consistency of property rights, I think it would be very appropriate to uh, zone the Thurston property as RR10. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, seeing no additional public uh, comment, we'll look for a motion to close the public hearing and reconvene the public meeting. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. We're back in the public meeting. On item G1, this is a request to change the future land use map designation and rezone property from MU160 and RR10 to RR10. Mr. Chair, I move that we approve the Thurston Rezone Map Amendment, application number 23038, changing 75.99 acres from MU160 to RR10 based on the findings listed in the staff report dated September 5th, 2023. I'll second it. A motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the motion passes. Thank you. Okay, we made it through all of those land use items. Can you believe it? And it only took us a little over two hours. All right. Uh, commissioner comments. Oh, man. And I know I'm up first. Commissioner Fackrell, she put you first tonight. Yay. Um, <laughs> Yay. <laughs> do you want me to start down to the I'm just going to pass it for you. She's happy for you. You what? I would like to go into a closed session afterward, if possible. For? Purpose of um, property. Purchase uh, or disposition of real property? Yes, and uh, pending litigations. Okay. And I don't know if I have to do. Yeah, I do have another. Um, we have submitted a an application, a letter of intent to in the from the trails committee for a uh, phasing of our trail plan that we have in the county, and we put in a letter of intent to the UDOT to start that process based upon different phases. The first phase is to. Um, is to connect, I mean, for UDOT to do this, not us, but for UDOT to um, put into their plans, their statewide plans, to do a trail from Morgan County to Weaver County and Davis County. And uh, so that one's just a letter of intent. We don't have any specific shit. Our first phase is from Trapper's Loop to the dirt spot. And so that's the one we're working on right now to see whether or not we can get some funding to work on that trail, because or trail or uh, extension of the road. Because the road is gonna be redone next year, repaved, but the it is not being extended because, I mean, it's widened because you cannot do it with a federal project and federal dollars, and so with that, we are um, trying to um, see what we can do, but the potential is to put in, it'd be a wider road. And as far as funding, that's what we're working on, grant writing and so forth. But that was the first phase, right, Robert? I think so. Has that been discussed with Brett? Uh, yes. Okay. Brett, Brett does know about this one. I want to make sure we're not putting any federal funding in jeopardy. No, we're not, right. because we may not do it at the same time. Okay, because he says we can't do it at the same time because of that federal funding. We can do it and get things prepared for it, but we can't do it at the same moment. So, anyway. So, and so suggestion with that, a lot of times federal funding has so much red tape tied to it that I won't name the project, but there's a project I'm, I'm on where the city decided to not use federal funding. And it was a good amount because they said um, it would increase the contractor's prices quite a bit and the Buy America and everything that's involved in federal funding. So they actually decided not to use it. They decided to use their own funds, but just as a yeah. comment okay. to that. 
So anyway, that was what was discussed the other night. Uh, another portion, part of the information that we gave to UDOT is in this letter of intent is that over the next few years, whatever it is within the trail plan, we would like to eventually be connected from our county to the other surrounding counties by trails. And that falls into under the governor's plans. So doesn't mean it's gonna happen overnight and you have to have funding to take care of it and you have to have funding to build it. And so it's not gonna happen overnight. But these are, those are just things that we want to continue to move forward in this process. Is there anything else I missed in that one? No. Okay. So, question for you. Uh -huh. Is there a reason that these letters of intent are going from a committee to UDOT and not from the commission to UDOT? Um, for one, I don't know how to write the letters. I mean, I do. I could do it. I just asked James Ebert to do it for us and, and let him write the letter of intent. So but we could have them come from the county commission as opposed to the... I don't know if it matters. I just... We typically don't give our committees... Um, That's a good point. A lot, advisory, advisory, a good point. a lot of... They're advisory in nature, so I feel like they're making a commitment to well, some degree on our, ha our right. behalf. And granted, I don't think they're committing funds at this point. Right. If they were, that would be probably even a totally different discussion, but it seems to me that an advisory committee probably shouldn't be sending a letter of intent. It probably ought to be the commission. Well, it was, it was through my that. direction to James Ebert to do that. It was well, a recommendation to prepare the yeah, letter. Yeah, I understand approval that. The point but I think approval of the letter needs to come through the commission. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah, we it's a great point. We, we should have. have. So, uh, when well, it comes future, back, we can do yeah, we can do that. So, okay. another point of I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay. Um, also, within the county, uh, part of economic development, I don't know how you want to handle this. Um, there has been a company that has come to us that would like to find approximately 40 acres to put in an industrial plant. And if there is any of that available, um, just to put the word out, that we would like to have that it's for a block making plant so anyway block, just like so, cement block like big blocks but, cement blocks but cement yeah yeah if there was i don't know if there's an area down there by croydon that's close to the cement plant it would probably be ideal for that i mean the place i was thinking was the utilizes cement the old devil slide town. There's a couple of different types of That's products on the plant. Yeah, but, you know, that might be a potential to talk with. You having another hot flash over there? Because it is cold on me. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I didn't touch it. Okay. So, that's, anyway, that's another one that uh, we really? need to try to look for if we can, if we want to even pursue it. So I told them I would bring that up to you guys and see whether or not you want us to pursue that or just say, you know, no, we're not put interested. Them in contact with the cement plant. Um, but currently they're without a regular manager. They're, they're kind of in between. Okay. A general manager, that is. Okay. So I don't know who would the best contact would be up there, but I can see if I can find out. Okay. But it might not hurt to put them in contact. The cement plant may have some space there that they'd be willing to, to lease long term or something for that. I don't know. Yeah. How many acres do they have? The plant? Oh, it's, it's pretty it's big. It's huge. Yeah. Uh, several hundred. Okay. They go over a section or more of ground. Yeah. And uh, let's see. Um, and then we've already done that one. And I don't know if we need to have a. Well, of course, Julie can send us that information that's on. Everybody has to go through a sexual harassment um, or harassment testing or something. Um, well, I was looking for Julie. She's not there. And uh, um, also, I just want to say that we need to give a shout out to the company that gave us the stakes for the party the other night and i think it would be nice if we could ask julie 
to uh, send a thank you letter to them. Agreed. And thanking them for uh, providing us the stakes for that party that we had. And it's unfortunate Matt wasn't there because they were great stakes. The judge came up to me, and Judge, um, yeah. Brower. Bauer. Bauer, yeah. Bauer, Brower. He came up, Brower. Brower. He came up to me and he says, are these Longhorn stakes? I says, yeah, they are. He says, I thought so. So Longhorn Steakhouse off Longhorn Steakhouse offered offered those to us and I'm I'm happy and pleased for that. So anyway, I hope they were good for you guys because they were great for me. What was the connection there? My, My daughter is a manager there, not the manager, she's one of the managers. And okay. uh, they had to throw they were going to be thrown away. They have a time limit as to how long because they come in fresh. And they have a time limit before they have to be sold and i mean which is two days so they're still good steaks but for their quality standards they cannot sell them and so they put them in the freezer and they says well, what are we going to do because they had an extra order somebody else was ordering and they had an extra order a large order that came in they didn't know what to do with them and i says hey i'll buy them and not thinking you know that it would be uh, they would give them to us but they says, well, if you're, if you're going to use it for a party or something for the county, we'll just donate it. Just let them That's let them know That's that awesome. we gave them to them. So, yeah, very nice. So, to do that. anyway, so that was um, that was it on that. I just everything else I think can wait because you guys are getting tired. Um, I think uh, one other thing that I would like to have us pass by is that as we're going through different activities throughout our portfolios, I think it, I'm going to try. I'm not very good at this, but I wouldn't mind us if we would start sending a communication between each one of us to just kind of keep us up to date on what's going on so we're not blindsided with different things that are occurring. Okay? Unless people don't want to do that. Mr. Wilson, I sent you guys uh, this. Robert probably should be giving this to you, but the airport item. You yeah. Know. Yes. He's what been is MIA. It? He's been playing too dang much. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's true. And he's proud of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there's wait till I'm through with this job. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it never happens. Uh, this tan area right here, the improvements are being made on that right now. Um, we probably really should have a standard of what we expect when they improve that in between the hangers and stuff, but. Because I think the EEFF rows, I don't feel like they did it correctly. They don't have any waterway or down the center of their, um, and I don't know how at this point we can do it, but they just did it, you know, because they all pitch in and they do it themselves. And I mean, they did a nice job other than there's really no waterway down the center. Oh, you mean where they paved in between the So they put hangers. concrete down the center and then and then they asphalt and it creates that waterway to get rid of the water where it's so level right there. Anyway, the, um, Nine Lines is paying for that blue area. This is what all the GG row area people are paying for. The, and they feel like the county should be doing this blue area right here. Which isn't a huge area, but it's the continuation of what our taxiway is to connect the FF row to the GG row and nine lines. So you're saying on the runway itself, number one? Well, it's not the runway runway, it's the taxiway. But okay. yeah, that number one represents one the portion they think the county ought to pay. I thought that's what we did doesn't go that far oh okay yeah this is extending for yeah this is the north extending out to the gg row now 
And nine lines. So the area from where it says nine line plus GG paid, paved, paid asphalt, there's kind of a dotted line between the light, uh, light brown and the darker brown. You're saying from that point on this runway or this? Just that blue area. Whether it be dark, I don't know why they put the the brown has two tone brown. brown on that was just to make it pretty, but the the blue part is what they feel like the county should pay for. And just at I'm, the very top of the screen. Yeah, and I'm not. Yeah, the light blue. I'm sorry, not the dark blue. The light blue. So I'm, and I know we aren't needing make any decisions. I just want you to know what that was and. Why? Is there a I bid for it? We're probably going to get a bid. Josh? Pardon? Do you know if there's a the, bid for it or what an approximate cost? Right now. So, okay. and they, they are dividing it up. It's been, in, it's been staked and engineered and all that good stuff. And I will say these, from all the hangars I've built down there, these guys have been more stand up than any of them, these GG guys and Nine Lines. Nine Lines has had a lot put on his back too. But Jeremy, he's been great. Are you building Nine Lines too? Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else? No. Yeah, no, but we're going into closed session, right? Yeah. We're having a yeah. closed session. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Anderson. Uh, no, I don't have anything. Okay. Um, I, I don't have a, anything other than to thank Julie and, and all those who participated in the county employee barbecue this last week. It was great success and appreciate all the efforts that went into that, so thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, oh, there was an item email that we got from Brett um, that the livestock committee would like to expand the, the barn at the fairgrounds. Visit with a few of us on that. So maybe I'll get with you, Matt, and you and I okay. can go over there and talk to them and see what they want to do. They they sent us a plan. They just want to extend it. it. Looks like about 50 feet across the whole width of that bar. Can we, before we do that, I think we ought to get together with the fairgrounds board, the uh, livestock board, the, everybody to associate with the fairgrounds, and let's talk about total future plans of that. I agree with that. I just think we ought to because there's a bleacher problem we've got that we need to take care of. We've got that we need to take care of. We need to take care of future event center, the future exhibition center, you know, whatever we need. We need to really discuss and start putting into phases what we want to do as we have money available for that. A new announcer's booth. A new announcer booth. Yeah. yeah, speakers. Oh, yeah, there's a bunch of things. That need to be so, done. I mean, I think it'd be good for us to get together for that purpose. If you could get them all together, I think we all ought to be involved in this. I think for purposes of the discussion on their expansion, we'll still go over there and talk to them, and then we can, we can get together. Okay. Discussion. We should get together. I think it'd be good. Yeah. May I request one more item? I would like if we would could get together to meet with the school board and uh, go through some issues that I think we all need to discuss together. And I don't want to say what they are right now, but I think w it would be great if we could sit down and talk uh, because there's a lot of disagreements between us all. And I just want to kind of get the air cleared between us, government to government, or entity to entity. If you don't want it, that's fine. I'll just go do it. Try. Well, I think we can. Any thoughts on that? Well, I th definitely think some things need to be ironed out. I I had to. I agreed with you a lot on how that that letter went down and stuff. I thought that was not appropriate at all myself, but I, I thought it was a little misleading, and and I just don't. I don't like that. And I I just think we ought to be all on the same page of, of hey. We do have a potential of having some extra income here. How do we make our community better rather than feel like we're going to, because they have the advantage. They're on a different calendar year than we are. So they have an advantage of raising it, and then we look like 
idiots if we want we need to or have to raise rates after that and so we kind of just get left with what it is and so I just think it it would be nice if we had a, a budget meeting with them and said hey here's our needs as well you know we only get 17 percent of the budget anyway um, we need it to go around for our whole community that's just my own thoughts thoughts I'm not disagreeing. I want to be careful that we're not cr intermingling um, the ability for different members to discuss um, ramp tax or discuss different taxes that if there's a tax that we're over, we're over it, not the school board. Or if school board's over another tax, they're over it. So I'm agreeing that we meet and, and have a better message. Um, also, at the same time, there is a separation and we need to make sure we're keeping things separate correctly I can agree I just I just think that we've got relationships that we need to mend or they need to or we just plain need to talk between us and uh, try to figure things out because I mean when we came into this job we were, were here or at least I did I came in it to it to try to unify the county not to this is your entity, this is your entity, we're our own. I want us to work together to make Morgan County a better place. So that's my thought, my, my whole reason. My point was not about that at all. I know. So I, there's just a concern when the school comes to us and says this is how you need to manage your budget. I agree with you there. That's but that's why we need to talk to them. I and think we need to sit down. a couple of occasions. I mean, we did it in a public meeting once. So I think it'd be good for us to sit down and talk. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll reach out. I I had mentioned that to the to the superintendent, and he agreed with doing that. Um, so I think it'd be good to sit down with, with the school board and the superintendent and have that discussion. So I can reach out to him and set a, try to set a time on. Not this week. No, but not not that soon. <laughs> I'm sure all of them have busy enough schedules. They're scheduled out more than a week. But we can definitely do that. Okay, Commissioner McConnell. You annually give the budget speech about percentages and so forth. I was looking at a tax notice for another county the other day for a client. And they actually had the graph on the tax notice that showed the percentages and, and in a graph form, pie chart. And I thought that's a pretty effective way of communicating that. We might want to consider including that on our tax Can, Who prints those for us? I don't know. Because I have we'd one. Have from, probably that's how Davis does it. I can bring one. It, it was, I think this one could have been Box Elder. But, but yeah, any, any of them that do that, I think it would be helpful for people to understand. It is neat to see the little teeny piece for the county. Yeah, I would actually love to do that. We talked about this multiple times and had not it done. So, Julie, will you put this on your list to go talk with um, Leslie about tomorrow and find out? Well, we'd like our printing company to add a pie chart that show or a graph that shows the percentage of taxes that go to each entity. Each entity, like it's in the city, county. Or how it's all, district, yeah, or all all every taxing entity, yeah. every taxing yeah. entity. Okay. And you I can get you a Leslie. photocopy of it if you want. Yeah, that'd be great. yeah I, I think that's a great idea. And we've talked about it in the past and just haven't done it. So, yeah. and it doesn't necessarily relate to this project that Matt, you sent this detail on, but there it are some, there was the annual notice that came out from the state with respect to potential funding for airport projects and I didn't talk with Joe about getting um, a bid for a plan for and, and you typically that's ceiling and, and that type of resurfacing thing. So, yeah so we're we're going to put something together on that there will be an engineering expense associated with it but I don't think that's going to be particularly expensive to just get a bid a projection of what those costs will be and then this was in my box. It's a airport lease agreement with Blair Gardner and an, and an assignment. So it looks like he 
is wanting an assignment and assumption of lease from Morgan County and because there's a bill of sale on the back from Sean Beckstrom for the hangar I think they're trying to do an assignment of the lease Sean Beckstrom's lease of his of the CC5 hangar to Blair Gardner but this assignment has Morgan County as the assignor so it, it's just wrong and then there's a separate lease agreement with Blair for the same hangar so that wouldn't we could terminate a lease with Sean Beckstrom and then do a new lease with Blair or we can have an assignment of Sean's lease to Blair but we can't do both of those things and we need to get it to the right party so was was this something that they gave to you or how it ended up in my box Sometimes they give it to, to the, the clerk. clerc's office. Yeah. Um, CC5? But That's I'm, what it looks like to me, CC5. Is that what Sean Beckstrom's hangar is? No. He's DD1. Does he have more than one? It says hangar CC5. Well, he... Well, this, that's, not, that's not public, so I, I'll, just, I'll just hold my lid. So I have a form for the assignment and assumption that we've used in the past. And it might it might be the form. They're just handwriting in the wrong parties. Oh. Okay. So can I give this to you to follow up on? Yeah, you want me I'll to follow a, up I on it? I can take a look at it. Okay. All Is right. Dave Hughes anywhere on there? Dave Hughes. I didn't see that name. Let me look on this bill. So Expert Enterprises LLC and Straight Up Aviation LLC. Expert. Anyway, I, I think I understand what they're trying to do. They're just not doing it on the right forms. So. Okay. And then YCC had their formal groundbreaking for their transitional housing facility. I think they're still looking to get about another half million in, but they've pretty much made their entire fundraise. So if any of you have a half million laying around, and want to donate it to the YCC. This is a solicitation. <laughs> um, you might want to talk to the audience. Yeah, you ladies are more than <laughs> welcome to participate. Um, and then they just had their golf tournament, which went pretty well. I don't know what the fundraising was on that. But. That's great. Okay, we have a request to go into closed session for the purpose of discussing the purchase or disposition of real property and uh, pending litigation. Do you want to talk about character confidence too? Or not? Probably ought to. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, you have to. All three of you. Okay. Okay. And character and professional competency of an individual. Can we okay. take a break first? <laughs> no. so let's just go ahead and vote on it, and let's, then let's while we're on. turning the camera around and all that, we can. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.